What is going on, everybody? It is episode 566 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. We are back from the weekend. I think that we have an exciting week ahead of us. I am so excited to see American Society of Magical Poops later this week. It's going to be fun to review that. Yeah, and that's that's going to be great. By the way, like when I went to do the intro, I went to look at the episode number and it was not written down. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, I just said a number and hoped to nice. hope it was. Right. You got it right. Okay, well we're good. We're, yeah. we're good. <laughs> yeah. Also, like I definitely ordered those tickets online, so I wouldn't have to go up to the Say ticket the counter and be like, hey. Can I have tickets for the N-Word movie? <laughs> Actually, it would be really funny to to film a bit where you just go to the theater and say it really, really loudly. <laughs> like, you should do that. Like, even though you've already got tickets, be like, I would like to buy some tickets and then just scream it as loud as you can. Yeah, yeah. we should do that as a, as a YouTube short. That, that would go viral. <laughs> Anything for the content. I said, and then spell it out for them. Uh huh. Anything for content. Also, we have the marketing man extraordinaire joining oh. us today. Hello, sorry. I said hello preemptively. How yeah. you doing, buddy? To continue my streak of like awkward intros. <laughs> oh, no, okay, so, so here's the thing. Uh, yesterday, I was, on, uh, I was on Valiant Renegade's channel and, and I, I realized something. Whenever like you do a stream on like another channel and they tell you to like like promote your show, if there was a list of the 100 worst promoters of your own content in the world, I would top that list like five times over. Like as soon as they're like, okay, you're free. I can talk about all the topics all day long, right? But as soon as they're like, <laughs> make everybody want to go look at your show, I'm like, that's yeah, what they like, said. That's what no, they no, like no, set I'm, you I'm up saying, for. But no, they're, they're they're saying like, oh yeah, shout it because we were we were promoting it because he's going Valiant Rene is gonna be on with us this week. And um, I'm just like, and I'm done with it. And I was like, done. And I go, wow, that was awful. <laughs> when I got off the, when I got off the stream, like, wow, that was truly horrifying. It was so bad. Uh, so if you are new, I did see a couple people say that they had subscribed from coming over from their channel. Just know that we're not that awkward all the time. It's it's more the energy that I had when I was on the stream, not the energy when I was trying to get off of it. So I, I understand what you're saying, Dane. Like the intro, much the same way. I feel like I didn't have this problem before. Yeah. You got, you got out of the swing of things. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, you've been doing it a couple of weeks in a row now, but it's been a while before that. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, sorry. Did, See? Say, now your intro is just say, like, Jeff, God. did we get You're being such a small bean right now. What? Does, what? <laughs> a small bean? Yeah. Yes, small bean. I'm surprised you haven't heard that term Sp before. Spelled differently. Does, guys, does Dane have baby girl energy? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, okay, was that you that used the term and I was surprised you knew what the term no, was? No, I, I, I literally found out when you guys sent me the clip. Okay. Yeah. And I thought baby girl energy was just going to be, I don't know, like the next evolution of Zoe de Chanel or something. But that what, would be good. That would be yeah. nice. That's what I thought. I mean, in a better world, right? That's LOL so random. I thought right. it was going to be, what's this uh, impossibly hot chick? Uh, she's Latina on everything. Uh, Petite. What, Bella what, Porch? Ryan Gosling meme. Like, he's, like, all dejected, and she's, like, electronic. What? I, I wish I knew Anna names. Anna Armas. Anna Armas. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. she, yeah. I thought it was going to be her, like, oh, baby girl, because she like, has baby face. Um, but no, it's gay men. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's straight men who look like they're gay yeah. men. There's a big difference there, and we're educating yeah. society about it. So Thank guys, you. we got a bunch of stuff we're going to get into today, but before we do, would you hit the like button on this video, please, and subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed here already, please and thank you. Remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those Super Chats right then and there, and then we will do our best to get back on topic. When Mary's here, it always goes much smoother. There was a couple of days where when Mary was gone, the Super Chats were just a shit show. It was. Like it was. what? Well, because like trying to get uh, you to say Phil, untoward things. Phil was good. Phil read the twenties. That's fine. But then when I'm Reading. trying to read the super <laughs> chat, when I'm trying to read the super chats, it's just we need your literary talent. We wow. Do. Yes. Thanks. It's it is a compliment. It yeah. is a compliment. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? We got a bunch of stuff. First things first. The Oscars happened last night, and despite despite all of the the stuff that they've done to promote diversity, equity, inclusion, including new policies that have been put into effect, it really was not exactly what you thought it was going to be. It really was a bunch of Oscars so white again. It seemed like uh, white people won all the awards and there was a bunch of people are protesting we back? out front. Yes. We're, are white people back today? They, they are so back this we're year. We're so back. 
<laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna talk about Proud that. We're gonna we're gonna talk about John Cena, who was there. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, Con Inc. conservative Twitter talking about the ritualistic humiliation of John Cena because he showed up nude or almost nude to give an award for best costume design at the Oscars, while also simultaneously promoting his new movie, Ricky Stanicki. So we will talk about that. We're going to talk about whether it is the Illuminati making him go out there naked, or or maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's the same people who are running that barbecue guy who's running Haiti now. I don't know. Wait, what? <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> There's about? There's a guy, uh, okay, uh, we, uh, this is not a politics show. I just, you, look up barbecue in Haiti and you'll 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 get some oh, content. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, also, we're going to talk about community. Comedian Jimmy Carr, who is in trouble again because he insulted a deaf audience member during a show. She took particular offense to this, but Jimmy Carr is a pretty, uh, you know, you know, he's got some offensive jokes. So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about the great debate that happened on Twitter over the weekend. Which way Western men? That is the question we ask you. Uh, that is because a conservative foreign policy analyst that <laughs> <laughs> Hey. I don't even know. Her name is Samira Khan. <laughs> we already lost yes. it. Okay. We already lost it. That's her she, self-described. She self self-described. is a self-described foreign policy analyst and a pageant queen who became an anti-woke journalist. Yes. Her name is Samira Khan. She's been and on she, she started beef oh, she with has? this girl named Hannah Barron, who is known on Instagram for her hunting and fishing and driving ATVs and doing all that tomboy stuff. Which is why I asked you in the chat today, ladies and gentlemen, I said, which way Western men, pageant queen or Southern tomboy? I encourage you, if you want to go and vote, if you want an informed vote, you can go look up photos of the two of them online or wait till we get to the, yes. to the topic. Yes. But uh, do cast your ballots in there. There will be no <laughs> 3 a.m. ballot dump. It will be a, fi a free and fair election. Uh, democracy matters here, so uh, don't worry about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we got a bunch of other stuff to get into, so if you guys are ready, we will just get going. Are you ready? I'm ready. Dana, you ready? Yep. He's ready. Let's go ahead and get started then. First things first, I do want to point out uh, somebody backtracked, and that person is, in fact, Doug Lyman. If you remember not that long ago, Doug Lyman, who is the director of the upcoming Roadhouse remake, a remake that doesn't really need to exist, said that he wasn't going to come to the South by Southwest premiere of this film to protest the fact that Amazon Prime was releasing this movie on Prime rather than to theaters. Well, he has since backtracked on that and he has decided to go to the premiere. And Jake Gyllenhaal gave him a set, you know, gave him like the, the lead in at the speech. It does feel like Jake Gyllenhaal does all the right, has like all the right moves, right? He doesn't seem to, other than his weird stuff that one time on that movie. None of it was recorded, so yeah. you can't prove that it happened. I think that this guy just saw the headline about Christopher Nolan's payday for Oppenheimer and yeah. he got lime green jello and couldn't stand the fact that he wasn't going to get paid as much if this movie went to the streaming so yeah so he, he had to did, eat his words he did end up going to the premiere i just thought i'd give everyone an update on that they they're not often men or women of their words out there in hollywood mm -hmm. <laughs> all right uh okay so if you remember last week we discussed india willoughby who decided to file a police report against jk rowling because she said that she misgendered her, which is a clear violation of the law because they don't have free speech over there in the UK. Well, it looks like that claim has fallen on deaf ears. India Willoughby's accusation that the author J.K. Rowling misgendered him online did not meet the criminal threshold, Northumbria police have said. No one saw this coming. Imagine my shock. 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 I mean, that, to be fair, I mean, given the fact that the UK doesn't have free speech laws, maybe it is shocking. J.K. Rowling has been vindicated. She was also tweeting on Mother's Day. It was just Mother's Day in the UK, not yeah. in the US. And she said, happy uh, birthing people who happen to be parents day. <laughs> oh yeah, she was going off on people on, on Twitter. Like she yeah. was having a lot of fun with like, you just know that she just loves it. She She's just it. up in her literal ivory tower, tower living in a castle. Yep on her phone, just laughing to herself. Her holding a wine bot, like a, a glass of wine like this with her phone in the other hand. Like she's a little crazy, but she's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Am I crazy or is like shitting on shit lips not as like fun anymore? Like they're just so repulsive and predictable. When did it change? I don't know, I'm asking. When did the, well, the fun get uh, taken out of it? Um. Maybe when Elon Musk took over Twitter and it didn't feel like we were transgressing as much. Maybe, that may be the moment. Yeah. Once it's allowed, it's then it's no yeah. fun anymore. There was a palpable change, you know. 
Now it just feels like you're dogpiling because you're actually allowed to do it. <laughs> yeah. Although there has been more censorship that I've noticed on X recently. Well, People there was, getting uh, their followers removed, yeah. posts removed. There's a documentary that had its own X account that got removed without explanation. Yeah. I forget what that documentary was about. I do like but. the guy who has like the, 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 the Elon Musk parody account where he then he says, he goes into every post like that and says like, we'll look into it. Interesting. We'll look into it. Because that's what Elon Musk my, does for all of them. My, fa my favorite thing is like every 36 follower accounts, every time they say a no-no word, being, they tag at Elon Musk like, excuse me, could you fix this? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, a relevant person. I, I do like that. Elon, like the idea that Elon Musk just actually fixes it himself. He doesn't. He doesn't call on <laughs> yeah. any of the people behind the scenes. He just goes and does well, it himself. It's annoying because he really only listens to people that he follows who have high follower counts. It's like unless yeah. Tim <laughs> complains about something, he's not going to address it. Maybe we, we need Tim to help us get our play button. Maybe we have Tim because I, I think other people have said that they've. Uh, it comes late. Well, I'm waiting for my code. I want the damn How play late? button. How, How late? late? <clears throat> How long are we going to have to wait for this play button? We We're entitled it. to it. We worked for it. We pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps. Yeah. Yeah. You really did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, you know, she stuck in the girls. It also could be funnier if maybe she just pays them off. J.K. Rowling just goes here. here's some... <laughs> She's paying off the, the UK on the, police. What the hell's on their money? I don't know who's the queen's on their money. Here's uh, okay. some money. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> quid. She paid, she paid a million quid. What, what a shitty name for a currency. Quid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. All right. Uh, and speaking of J.K. Rowling. Yes, um, the Professor Harry Potter Sproach fans himself. got owned by an actress from the Harry Potter series who played Professor Sprout. Yes. She was recently doing an interview and she was like, guys, if you're an adult who's still into Harry Potter, you need to grow up. Let's watch the clip. Harry Potter fans versus Blackadder fans. If a Harry Potter fan was to yell out at you, what Fiend. would they say compared to a Blackadder fan? Well, a Blackadder <laughs> fan always says wicked child, you know, say wicked child. Harry Potter, I worry about Harry Potter fans because they should be <laughs> over that by now. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was 25 years ago and Bro, it's for children. I think it's for children. Oh, but they get stuck in it I, and I do cameos and people say, oh, we're having a Harry Potter themed wedding. <laughs> and I think, gosh, what's their first night of f fun going to be? I, ca I, ca I, I can't even think about it. No, uh, uh, Harry Potter is wonderful. I'm very grateful to it. It's, it's over. <laughs> She's done. She's, <laughs> you're not allowed to like it anymore. A lot says. of them needed to hear this, and I'm glad that she said it. She's, but uh, they were like, guys, adult life is so depressing that I just need to escape into the Harry Potter world and pretend that I'm dating Draco Malfoy. I think all super fandoms are undignified, honestly. Yeah. Superhero fandoms? Yes, yeah, like super fandoms when they like take it or to the next level. Fandoms. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, when, let's say you're a Bengals fan and you have Bengals sheets. Like anything that's sports, franchises, yeah, 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 yeah. in general. Like I call my son Eli because I love Eli Manning. Or Moderation is key. It yeah. is all things. We're always talking about the people who make it their entire identity. And those right. are the ones that have J.K. Rowling derangement syndrome, not the casual fans. And that's, that's why I don't get. I feel that... Somebody out there is going to have PCC bed sheets. I can't wait. I don't uh, know how they separate the art On the Teespring. Soon. On the Teespring. Yeah. They're... They're incapable of separating the art for the artist from everything except Harry Potter. Like they su they still super like it. I, I think the nor yeah oh no those that specific subcategory yeah like I actually I feel bad for them because it's one of these things where it's like imagine the, I mean it's kind of the opposite like it's it's the opposite end of the spectrum of what happened to the comic fans, right? Who like they they took this medium they love and then the people in it just start crapping on them, mm. right? And so just imagine this thing you love more than anything in the world, and it just runs completely contrary to your socio-political views, which obviously to them matter a whole lot. If it's somebody who doesn't care about that stuff, they don't care. Like I said, a lot of normies, they just don't care, and they either don't know that J.K. Rowling says this stuff, or more likely they hear it and they just say, has nothing to do with me, I don't care. Honestly, normal people don't have Twitter. Yes. No, that's true. <laughs> and they're surprised when you tell them that you have a Twitter and they don't know that J.K. Rowling has any controversial opinions. I mean, that's I mean, that can't be true. If they Google anything Harry Potter, then at least a couple articles about her come up. I Maybe. constantly wonder, like, what are the sets of circumstances that create normies today? Because obviously I'm in 
unfathomably terminally online and to, to like to the point that there's no turning back i consider myself a normie for the most part no you I, yeah. oh my god like i do how contrarian can you be i'm i you know i mean <laughs> I, you're wrong <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you're I, not your job is online you work for timcast you have a you, you have, have a, a podcast. twitter account you look at tweets this is you your know. co-host like what are you what are you talking <laughs> like, about you're not a normie it's nice that you want to think that <laughs> no, I, but you're not i think of it as more as one of those things like uh, when i think of people that the are audacity then the opposite of a normie is somebody who knows a whole lot about a specific subject matter i don't really have any that's sort not. of expertise into anything i just kind of exist i, I mean That's relative I mean. to the rest of the population yeah. you are far more online Yes. Okay. Fair. I, I, I'm I think that's more the benchmark. Like, yes. Okay. If, if the idea is internet in normie, then yes. Then I'm far more terminally online than I'd like to be. You want to change that and You're become a, a normie podcaster. in the future? Yes. I would love to be. A, I would love to. Be a, <laughs> like, I would mean, love to do a show called uh, like I have no idea where you where you guys just present me terminally online topics and I just say <laughs> I didn't know that. Like wow. Just, I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. You're like, telling me this for the first time. For, for the first time, uh, because <laughs> tiny you know, dancer. Most of in the these background. things, most of these things end up what a great sucking the <laughs> joy was. out of your life, right? Uh, when we were okay, so we're gonna be talking about the Samir Khan and the Hannah Baron thing, and the amount of time I spent curating tweets <laughs> from famous people or pe- I guess internet famous people, right? Talking about it, I, I, you know, my soul felt a little bit of it leave every time can I, we make that the like, poll is what, does Ra- what does razor fist say, think about uh hannah Barrett and what you know all of these people right actually no the razor fist one was related to the john cena thing, well but, we, we already have a poll up today but if we didn't we would ask the audience we'll ask that this normie. week at some point am i a normie i believe i am yeah that all was right. the most I mean, long-winded cope for something you're definitely like, more of a normie than me yeah there you go. See? But that Perfect. doesn't mean that's you're normie. literally that's not nothing. saying much. Uh-huh. <laughs> normie. All right, you're gonna have to tell everybody what the hell's going on with Ariana Grande. Oh, speaking of things you have to be chronically online to know, mm-hmm. meaning me. Yeah. So Selena Gomez just posted on her Instagram story one of the lyrics from Ariana Grande's new album. It's called Eternal Sunshine, and I don't know the timeline of when she wrote these songs, but it definitely sounds pointed at the ex-wife, the now ex-wife of her boyfriend, Ethan Slater, Mm -hmm. whom she stole. And the title of the song is The Boy Is Mine. And it's just like, F you, I'm your ex-husband's mistress. And I don't care that I tore your family apart, ha ha. Selena Gomez posted this uh, and said, the queen never misses. And then someone posted a picture of Ethan Slater and of Selena Gomez's boyfriend, Benny Blanco, next gentlemen, to each other. Gentlemen, gentlemen, as long as you're successful, <laughs> you got a shot. Dude, it, and honestly, they're like, you know what? The boy is yours. <laughs> we don't want him. I was I was leaving Aldi the other day with my wife, and I saw this insanely unremarkable guy with this gorgeous lady. And I was like, women truly do not care about looks. He has a remarkable personality. I mean, uh, although I find it hard to believe that Ethan Slater has a remarkable personality given what he did to his family. But, you know, he's he, t- he he has the musical theater energy that Ariana Grande is looking for right now. So <laughs> I mean, it's not the guy she settles down with, right? I can't. Imagine. Oh, I certainly hope not. I can't imagine. I, just, I can't imagine. I mean, she did it, Pete Davidson. And uh, and like when I see yeah. like honestly, Pete Davidson gives off like pig pen energy, where he just has a cloud of dust following him at all times. At this point, I again, it's I for I have no idea. I'm flabbergasted. And the other one is <laughs> Benny Blanco, right? Yeah, that's he Selena like, Gomez. He looks like slightly skinnier Andre the Giant from back in Whoa. the day. Whoa. Doesn't he? He really does. He's, got, he's wow. got Andre the Giant face going on. Oh my God. I don't know the reference. Uh, he's, really? He's, no. Wow. Well, the, he's, it's kind of self explanatory. His name's Andre. And he's he a, a giant. giant. Uh-huh. Okay. He, he's <laughs> cool. a pro, re- he was a pro wrestler. Okay. Uh, and he was in the Princess, uh, the Princess Bread. I haven't okay. seen that movie. Oh, well, I did, I did see the movie. Remarkable bank account, somebody says. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Selena Gomez and Ariana Grande are both massively wealthy and more wealthy than their boyfriends by a long shot. I don't think so. By a long shot. Not Benny. Selena Gomez is a billionaire. Whoa, really? Yeah. Ariana Grande is probably close to being a billionaire. They are way more wealthy than their boyfriends. How is she a billionaire? I don't know how. (laughs) I really don't, but she is. She just crossed that... uh, Oh my by God. like a few months ago that guy must have been like a 
dying Dalfour baby in another life to have that karma, I guess. So, you know, it's not the bank account. It's not the looks. The I doubt it's the personality. The completely unreliable information around net worth, notwithstanding, it says Ariana Grande is worth about $240 million. Which is well, she's definitely worth many, many times more than the guy who played SpongeBob on Broadway. Okay, we know that. <laughs> so it's not really the bank account. She's paying for dinner. It's not It's nice. not their looks. And at least for Ethan Slater, I know it's not his personality. So yeah, it's just puzzling. Also, she put out a PSA, much like Taylor Swift, to all of her fans, telling them to stop harassing her ex-husband, Dalton Gomez. She said, hi, just wanted to say anyone that is sending hateful messages to people in my life based on your interpretation of this album is not supporting me and is absolutely doing the polar opposite of what I would ever encourage. And is also entirely misinterpreting the intention behind my music. I ask you, please do not. It is not how to support me. It is the opposite. Although this album captures a lot of painful moments, it's also woven together with a thorough mm. line of deep, sincere love. If you can't hear that, please listen more closely. Thank it's you. You. It would be intellectually dishonest to believe for her to say that she didn't know that this was going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean... Very dishonest. But I thought that most of the album was about Ethan Slater, not her ex-husband, because she loves gloating about stealing another woman's man. She just sees that a man is taken. She's like, mm, that's delicious. I've come to the realization <laughs> that with a significant amount follower account, you kind of have a, like a weaponized army. Oh yeah, and it, so the mm -hmm. so Absolutely. large Twitter accounts are pretty much warlords. Yeah, yeah. The last thing you want to do <laughs> is piss off somebody with a with a with a large following, right? Yeah, because you're not yeah. like the the flack you're going to get isn't even necessarily by their design. Like there's just enough stupid people who are going to have um you know a mind of their own that are just going to take it too far. Dreamcast Knight said SSRIs and birth control do a hell of a job on women's sense of taste. It might be that. Thank you, SSRIs and birth control. That that mm. might definitely be a factor here. Um, but beyond that, uh, Northwest. Yeah, Northwest is also announcing her new album that she's working on. Dear God. She's titling it <laughs> Elementary School Dropout. How original. Well, I mean, it's in the vein of Kanye with, you know, college dropout. Come up with your own name. <laughs> he likely did come up with it, so, you know. Well, I mean, at least it was true for him. I hope she's not dropping out of elementary school. Maybe it should be like private elementary school <laughs> dropout. Sierra Canyon Sierra dropout. Sierra Canyon dropout, yes. He would love that. Wait, what was the name of his school? Of Kanye's, Kanye's school? Oh, I don't know. What, didn't he have a school? Yeah, he did. We talked about it extensively. What, was, what you mean Donda Academy? Yeah. Yeah. Donda Academy dropout is what it should be called. Damn. Yeah, well, I mean, he wants her to drop out of Sierra Canyon because it's a fake school in the system. The system. The system, man. Dude, we're in the nepotism baby rapper part of the collapse. <laughs> like, this is highly advanced. This must be like 93%. Yeah, but I suppose that's fine, right? It's, it's, she'll make money. This Wait, sorry. Nepotism baby baby rapper. There you go. Oh, right. Because she's Kim's baby. Yes. So you have multiple layers of nepotism. Nepo ba wait, what? nepotism, baby, 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 because she's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we were just talking about Dakota Johnson, who comes from famous parents. There's a lot of actors that come well, from she's famous hot. parents. So there you go. It's Perfect. it's fine. Um, Nine or ten years old, you know, focus on your homework, not being at Kanye album listening parties. I mean, it's a hell of an age to grift off your parents. Hanging out with Ice Spice. I'm never like I, I just I'm always on the opposite side of the Nepo baby argument. I'm always happy to see them try and, and find. And okay, try and find let her success. try when she's an adult. Yeah. Oh yeah. In this case, <laughs> yes. Maybe, Take her phone away. No. Or or like m make a rule. Be like you can only make music during the summer. When you're not <laughs> in school. Uh, otherwise, you have to go to class. You have to finish every, your education and everything. How many actors do you hear about where they have to talk about like I had to go get my schooling done while I was in. Well, I was on set and, and stuff like that. And it's just not the same thing as going to a, an actual school. Can you explain that take for me? What? That, the, uh, I, I, I root for Nepo babies to. Yeah. I, I love the idea of seeing a child uh, outshine the parents. So I uh, like right now that now he never will. Guys, clip that. So the sentence ends at child. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Go on. You'll never see it because you're not terminally online. Anyways, so don't worry about it. I, like John David Washington, he's never going to be his dad. He's never going to be Denzel Washington. But I'm enjoying him watching him make movies and try to build a legacy for himself. The same goes true for any actor, especially the ones like uh, that 
embrace some ones will change their name right i would almost rather they keep the name and then try to do it on merit because they can astroturf you all they want but if you're really going to reach the level of someone like a denzel washington it takes more than astroturfing there have been many celebrities uh, somebody just the other day was talking about so uh, millie bobby brown has that movie damsel coming out yeah and somebody was like can you guys please stop trying to make millie bobby brown a thing i always talk about uh uh She's been a thing but i uh, the same thing goes like when they were trying to make jai courtney a thing like Hollywood picks these actors that they like and then for a couple of years they put them in a bunch of movies and they try to make them the next big thing in Hollywood you can try all you want to make some child of a famous actor the next big thing but for it to actually work they have to actually be good at what they do I, I for nepotism I enjoy I truly enjoy the Chet Hanks approach yes so maybe the answer is being like a trans Jamaican Rapper, he's acting bodybuilder. Yeah. He's acting again. Now. He's infinitely likable, and I truly don't comprehend what it what it is. Yeah, he's amazing. Chet Hanks rules. Also, he's like he's doing like music covers on his on his YouTube or on his Instagram now. Do we he's, got Chet Hanks money at this point? We to, do like, not have Chet him? Hanks money. Damn, that'd be Unfortunately, good. No. is that two hundred k? I don't know. Like he 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 created his YouTube account and hit hundred k in like no before he even released a video. When I asked him to be on the show, he asked for your rates. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. I don't know. Like how many followers do we need? We gotta get there. I, 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 how many I'm crisis kidding. parties? He did like he was doing this. He did this video over the holidays where he's like walking somewhere with his dad, and just like yelling in his ear and annoying him. And it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Tom just barely tolerates Chet. Yes. If I was a millionaire, I, I would genuinely pay his rate and put put him in the chair. And, and here's the thing: what the thing for Tom is is he looks at me and goes, "At least he's not Colin," because right. Chet Hanks looks like somebody who would push Colin Hanks into a locker. And yeah, give him a wedgie, oh, which Colin is way cooler. No one cares about Colin. No, nobody. He had the no worst Dexter season ever. He's just—he's not a very interesting actor. He's just not. I mean, I haven't even seen yeah. him in anything. Uh, so yes, uh, I say give the Nepo babies a chance. It's all Hollywood. It's all who you know, anyways. Whether it's behind the scenes or not. At this point, okay. So yes, your parents are famous, and that gets you a leg up. How different is that really from just having a bunch of connections in the industry that you make? Uh, off the bat right away anyways yeah right? it's it's like a degree higher yeah, I guess but at the same time it's all Hollywood is an extremely incestuous place as far as how they promote people from one level to the next <laughs> I guess I just don't really care if they give good performances they give good performances and I just like to see people succeed we see a lot of this okay so wrestling as an industry right uh, is very big on promoting like the sons like like the rock is the son of uh, the high chief Peter Maivia, who was a very famous, he uh, was a very popular wrestler before him, and now Roman Reigns is his cousin. They're very big on lineage in wrestling, mm -hmm. and it's not considered nepotism, it's considered to be almost like class there. You're like Randy Orton comes from a separate class because cowboy Bob Orton was very successful before him. So they look at it differently. I guess maybe that's just how I look at it. I like to see somebody come up and become more successful than the people that came before them. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any problem with you know, someone just because they were born to famous parents. I don't, I don't, don't have a problem. I'm just not it. like rooting for them. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess it's a nice story. I just think that although this would be antithetical to everything the Kardashian family stands for, they need to take away North's phone, and her internet access, no TikTok. And her TikTok. No, sorry. And, you know, honestly, she shouldn't be listening to vultures. It's not kid friendly. Um, also, like dropping out of elementary school. Like you should finish at least a little. Like bit. at least wait until the seventh grade. I don't Seriously. think she's actually dropping out. I think it's just an album. <laughs> I, I got that much. Well, then where's the struggle? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Do you want to tell us what's going on with JoJo Siwa, or for the people who might not know who the hell she is? Guys, JoJo Siwa, we have talked about her on the show before, but if you if you don't know, she was on the TLC show Dance Moms. One of the many shows that TLC has done to mine the trauma of children, like toddlers and tiaras, for instance. Um, but it was all of these little girls who were in a dance troupe and their instructor, Abby Lee Miller, just constantly emotionally terrorized them, threw chairs at them, is just psycho. And it probably gave them a lot of issues. Well, Jojo Siwa now has kind of changed her public persona from being very kid friendly. She was working with Nickelodeon, wearing bows in her hair and wearing pink all the time. And now she's just going for this like butch lesbian vibe, basically. Uh, she's small she's nailing it. It was, uh, it yeah. was uh, Rocky Johnson was his dad. Peter Maivie was his grandfather. I, was, I had to mix that up. Fact checked. Yep. 
Um, yeah. But <laughs> Jojo Siwa was recently in an interview where she talked about how she does plan to have kids despite being a lesbian and planning to have kids with another woman she says her sperm donor is already lined up and she's already tatted the names of her future children on her body and she showed the tattoos pretty bizarre what if she ends up infertile well i mean that doesn't quite this, matter right because you can just use a surrogate is or this, you can use you know yeah. her wife i don't know <laughs> there are many ways to do it these days if you pay enough Crystal Chicks would call this manifesting, right? Yeah, I guess so. They would. Let's, yeah. let's look at the video. Uh, oh, wait, which one? Are we, not the 32-second thir one here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He named your children? Bully. Bully. <laughs> really? I, have, I actually have two tattoos dedicated to him. Oh, my um, God, her voice. dedicated to my baby girl one day. Her name is uh, Somebody said she sounds like a SoundCloud rapper. Then this is dedicated to twin boys, Eddie and Teddy. Um, <laughs> Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy. Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy. I got I want What's three with babies. The I have a sperm donor lined up. Um, he Wait, sounds like she did chain smoking cigarettes. Is this for a dog or a friend? I will tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I make great kids. I mean, you um, <laughs> yes. Is great he here friend. today? Maybe. <laughs> I, um, I, um, I know who it is. <laughs> oh, hey, it is good. Good. He named your yeah. children. So she sounds like that because she's been screaming for about 10 years. Yeah. Um, not because she smokes. But uh, another thing I wanted to bring up here is that they're doing a reunion with all of the girls who were once on Dance Moms now that they're adults and it looks messy. Let's uh, watch this clip, the short clip here. All you do is set her up to fail. Oh, the internet oh. doesn't even like it. Who does that to a kid? I thought it wasn't enough, like in every single way. To me, that's Abby Jojo. Was always right. It's hard though when people feel entitled. I got my kid on a TV show, just like you got your kid on a TV show. She deserves nothing. <laughs> no matter how bad it got, I always wanted to be there. Then why did you leave? Hey, you're not winning and you're not placing the overalls. It's hard to say I forgive her when she did so many nasty things to me. It's just so bizarre that dance can get to that. I don't think anybody can explain how complicated all of our relationships are with her. That would never come 10 feet near me if she did that to me. Have you learned nothing? We would not be here without dance moms. It was literally the step. But why are they to messed up today? <laughs> yeah, huh. here, it's kind of like let me erase my past, pretend it never happened, shove it down the drain. When it's like that's why you are who you are. She's gonna go. She's gonna do the solo. It's gonna be good. And we're all gonna have fun. One two three four five six seven eight. 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 Here we go, ladies. Christ almighty. So they had this giant psycho middle-aged woman emotionally terrorizing them for years of their upbringing and we're wondering why they're messed up now. <laughs> this photo is amazing. This is the ticket I want to see yeah. in 2024. In, and we still don't know who Trump is going to choose for yeah. a VP, but let's hope it's Sydney Sweeney. That would be... This AI-generated photo is just everything. Uh, and I think you could put that photo in just about every one of his uh, campaign pictures and it would probably fit. He would literally win on this. Probably. Just this alone. This choice. Yeah. I don't know if Sydney Sweeney would do it, but she is a rumored Trump supporter. I wouldn't. Well, I, I, I mean, more than likely her parents are. Yeah, yes. for sure. All right. Uh, you're going to have to explain the Kate Middleton stuff to everyone. It's, it's yeah. complex, but really the, the photo <laughs> is simpler. It's a conspiracy, basically. By now, Kate Middleton has been photographed for the first time since her hospitalization and her mysterious medical episode back in January. Um, in that really sketchy paparazzi photo from the car where it looks like it was taken with a potato. Well, now Kensington Palace has released another photo of Kate Middleton for their Mother's Day. Her and her three children together looks very nice on first glance. She said, thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months. Wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day. And uh, you here's, might not notice at first glance, here's the but first, here's the photo first. This image is heavily photoshopped, if not AI generated. But here's the here's the post from the AP. Um, it says kill notification clients. Please be advised that the following story has been killed and should no longer be used. 
Uh, story, UK Royals Princess. The reason for killing the story, at closer inspection, it appears that the source has manipulated the image. No replacement photo will be sent. Please remove it from all platforms, including social, where it may still be visible. You are receiving this email because the Associated Press is now serving notice of video kills to customers via operational email. This uh, change will ensure all needed parties are aware of any relevant issues with AP video content. Yeah, so... Among other things, uh, what's been noted here uh, is that all of the children have their fingers crossed in a really bizarre way. You can tell if you look closer that Charlotte's wrist is disconnected from the sleeve of her shirt. Um, It's very out of focus in certain places. And uh, also most shocking is that Kate Middleton is pictured no longer wearing her wedding ring. There's uh, there's, there. Uh. They, there is her her wrist her daughter's yep. wrist you see this looks right clearly here. edited okay there's nothing con- like no wedding ring i don't get what's going on because so the parts that look fake here the, uh, they zoomed in on the, the kid's finger that's kind of overlapping over the the middle finger and also the the girl's knuckles so if those are like the edited parts i don't like i don't know there's like, more why in particular um what about well, the top of the back boot Normally, I think that people would overlook this because obviously any image that comes out of the royal family is going to be heavily retouched and scrutinized and analyzed first. But specifically because people are worried about Kate Middleton's health, her whereabouts, uh, and they also think that a divorce announcement is about to come forward from the royal family. That's why it's so shocking to people that they would put this out there. I also want to play this video. This was her. So they uh, think that the photo of her in the family picture was taken from a magazine cover. Correct. And that this isn't actually a recent photo. Correct. Um, so, like, you know, there's no reason not to post a recent photo unless you literally can't. Yes. Right. So does she is she disfigured? Where is she? Is she dead? She did, did she run away? She did release a statement. Uh, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone is celebrating. So why would she even feel the need to to release the, the like why why did kate middleton yeah. herself have to come forward and yeah. debunk these claims and take the blame for why this photo is so jarring rather than somebody who's like an intern at the palace that effed up if she were sick or deceased like what what would be the consequence of announcing it like i i feel like it would be more likely divorce more likely, yeah. And there have been rumors about cheating and affairs between her and William for a, wo- a long time now. The windowsills are definitely wonky back there. Yeah. Last year, the rumors started that Prince William was having an affair with uh, another noble named Rose Hanbury. And this was a blind item that said... Uh, the British Royals extramarital affair is an open secret in London and amongst the English aristocratics set and is the talk of every party and news desk at the recent media party. I was told the real reason for the affair was the Royals love of pegging, which the, the wife is far too old fashioned to engage in. The wife doesn't mind her, in fact, prefers her husband getting sexual needs fulfilled elsewhere, as long as things don't become emotional, which was the case with the last woman. <laughs> so after that came out, hashtag Prince of Pegging started trending last year, and then hashtag <laughs> Prince William Affair. So people think that Prince William has, uh, you know, some weird kinks that Kate Middleton is not interested in, in engaging in. And... The recent photo of Kate Middleton from the paparazzi where you can barely see her face. She's turned away and she's in the car with Prince William. It's unclear whether that is her or is it the mistress, Rose Hanbury, I like in the this car. photo. That, that, I think this one's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally I think, happened. I think that one's real. I did like this statement. Dear Royals, we are sensible people. All we need is a video of Kate with today's newspaper telling us the Oscar winners from last night <laughs> to have it confirmed that you w- haven't killed her. Yeah, but the the overall message from the palace is stop asking questions. Yep. Leave her alone. Leave Brittany alone. Leave her alone. Like the- but yeah, they said, uh, if you need more proof that the royals call the shots on every story about them in the press, last week the British media said they wouldn't publish paparazzi photos of Kate until she was back at work. Today they're publishing paparazzi pictures of Kate to save face. 
<laughs> I think it's so impressive, like these fandoms that can immediately, like, oh, oh yeah. old photo well, overlaid over this. Why would you use, out of all the photos to use, why would you use a like a magazine cover photo? There's, she's got to be a heavily photographed person. There's got to mm-hmm. be a photo of her that's less visible than one from a cover on Vogue. I mean, at this point, I feel like they would have even found it if it was like unremarkably famous photo. Yeah, yeah. I, I just it fuels a lot of conspiracies these types of things and I think a lot of people still get Princess Diana energy from a lot of this because of uh, how much she sparked the public interest in her time the idea there is if you marry into the royal family you can become a victim of the royal family yep. and their demands yep. right but uh, or maybe maybe this is all a coordinated campaign on, the, on behalf of Meghan Markle to get the attention off her until she can line up her next move I mean wouldn't it be it would be honestly remarkable if this generation had two princesses that were like just nah like they because i mean i feel that british people they take the the monarchy uh, as a symbolic role like pretty seriously like they 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 all dig it i've never heard uh someone that doesn't dig it and so I guess like Meghan Markle making like a mockery out of it. And then, I mean, I guess divorces isn't uncommon. Well, or- the difference would be, you know, Meghan Markle left the royal family and took Prince Harry with her and yeah. then had him sell them down the river with all of these books and podcasts and the docuseries. But for Kate Middleton, I guess that means William is so loyal that he's not going to leave and she has to divorce to leave. I do like the uh, I do like the idea that the prince and princess have a joint Twitter account. I wonder if they have I don't I wonder if they have joint Instagram and Facebook accounts, too. Because she would be the queen eventually. Right. Yes. Yeah. And maybe she just doesn't want that, you know. Scary, scary. Hopefully, uh, hopefully she's OK. and Nothing has happened to her. It's definitely dodgy most of all that she's not wearing the ring and she didn't address that in her comment. Yeah, that that makes the most sense. Like she's like, "Yes, I sometimes dabble in Photoshop." So, uh, you Photoshop your wedding your ring, ring off? off? Why would you do that? What's that about? That seems weird. Or was it someone else's hand? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, what would you guys like to see cringe or cute of the day? Dane. I always like starting with cringe. Okay. We will start with cringe first then. All right, uh, this is from over the weekend. This was a clip of Madonna. Let's go ahead and listen to what she has to say here. Take this ride with me. What are you doing sitting down over there? Uh, what are you doing sitting down? I, I don't understand what's happening. Politically incorrect. Sorry about that. Okay, so she she saw someone in the audience sitting down, and it happened to be (laughs) a fan in a wheelchair, and she called them out and put them on blast in front of thousands of people, and then she was like, "Oh, politically incorrect. Sorry." Between that and her falling over in the chair the other day with her knee brace on on stage, she's a had not exactly bowling a, bowling a strikes in this one. Humble it, yourself, it, It's a real tendency of the human condition of... So she has like thousands of adoring fans, but must focus on the one person that she thought wasn't reviewing her. Like yeah. stand-up comedians do that a lot. Like everyone's laughing except one person and they hearken on them. Yeah. But I for wonder, stand-up, that's part of the job, right? Crowd work is part of the job. We are going to get Some, into that later. Yeah. I was going to say, she could call Jimmy Carr and, and compare notes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and I want to show this one, because Dane showed us this one as well. So do you want to explain this one, Dane, what people... Uh, I can, what well, read the tweet for us. Can, uh, okay. Oh, so this is from somebody who says, good office job making 80K a year. Married to your first girlfriend. Take the dog for a walk every morning. Game nights with friends on Friday nights. Missionary in the dark on Saturdays, <laughs> bottle of wine in a movie with your girl as a treat. How do men live like this? I, I know that missionary <laughs> in the dark on Saturdays is like a loaded sentence or fra- whatever fragment sentence right there. But everything else sounds not bad. Like, am, I, am I crazy? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of harp on the idea that what what has bothered me the most about the culture is like everyone's obsessed with the idea of the grass always being greener on the other side. And it's like people just don't know how to accept happiness when they have it because they think they can always do just a little bit better. Well, men don't want to be comfortable, mm-hmm. right? They want to be a warrior. <laughs> and they're like, why why are men okay with not but living usually, like Genghis Khan? But usually that's they're not employing that tactic in their personal lives. They're no. employing that tactic in their work lives. Sure. If there was supposed to be an analogous 
way of looking at that, right? Yeah. The, the thing yeah, is, like, I, I first line, like, ADK, good job. So by good job, I, I think I'm associating that it's stable and they more than tolerated. They like it. Mm-hmm. Off the bat, most people hate their job, so that that's like a huge win. Second is like married to their high school girlfriend, like enormous win. Like I, it's statistically very improbable. Game night with their friends on Fridays. I mean, this is like a fraction of a percentage human being at this point. I feel you could also, I mean, <laughs> Most, you could, you could, I mean, subs- yeah. could substitute substitute that to like watching football with friends on Sundays. Sure, well, yeah, yeah, game night. Whatever. Millennials are increasingly reporting that they don't have friends. Dude, it's like it was like sixty percent more post pandemic where like i have zero yeah. contact mm-hmm. with friends anymore yeah so this is this sounds like a guy who's <laughs> who should be high yeah. on life yeah. so the, the, the i don't know i think this is expressing a desire for facing adversity no it's I, it's some faux andrew tate bullshit that you think? I, I would of go course. his Direction. Yeah, hundred yes, percent. I would. Like, um, oh my god, how well, could I even live? I, I have so many women. Around, like, it's focused around his relationships. Yeah, yeah. Not uh-huh. adverse. It's, fo- it's focused around adverse reactions to being in a, a committed relationship. Not you know going to work to conquer his uh, his job or some other stupid analogy that they're going to draw a comparison to hunting and foraging. What what is the fulfilling lifestyle for a man then? If we're asking this person. Uh, you know, I mean, would it be like um, starting your own business, yeah. not sleeping, drinking raw eggs yes. and Eating um, going and to the bar every Friday night and going uh, home with 10 different women, all 10 at the same time yeah. and they just, yeah. <laughs> while the other 10 wait at the door. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's do Q to the day as well. Then we got some uh, some submissions here. First one's first I had to move this one to the front of the line, guys, because it's Aww. someone's birthday. Q to the day, maybe. Uh, my dog's birthday was today. This came in yesterday. So yesterday was their birthday. Both birthdays? Both birthdays. On the same day? Look. Okay. okay. Blessed day. I don't support putting hats on animals, but a birthday hat is an exception. I will it's, give... it's like the cone of shame. Yes. But inverted. It's the cone of happiness. Yeah. And that's, that's okay. Good I like the little, the little tassels. I had, on the that hat. one on the right, I love that kind of breed of dog. It's a Weimaraner. I, I had one growing up. Well, that is a very cute dog and happy birthday to happy both of them. Happy birthday. Didn't give me names, uh, so I, I don't know what their names are. Uh, all right, let's do one more. This one from Olivia Claire on Twitter. Uh, this says, after moving multiple states away, Chloe is settling in well and handled the 12-hour car ride like a champ. Here is her on the washer, here in full goblin mode under the futon, her in her new chair and her laying down. <laughs> Love that. She looks very at home. Perfect place to sit. It's already destroying. <laughs> it's already destroying the furniture, as Love cats that. do. I feel like full goblin mode is a Gen C uh, phrase that I hear increasingly more, and I, I don't quite understand what it is. It's like being very mischievous. They would have to explain full goblin mode. Uh, and then why are, is Chloe so depressed? Chloe is always looking. No, it's not not depressed. Chloe is always very anxious. Okay. Chloe is always very anxious and, and hates her sister. So. Puts me on edge. Yes, exactly. Uh, Just looking at it. The thing is, like, Chloe will, like, go, uh, like, invade personal space and then be annoyed when you, like, get close to touching her. Mm-hmm. Like, wa- imagine somebody walking up, like, in, like, literally an inch from your face, and then, like, when you go to push them away, they get really offended <laughs> at you pushing them away. Uh, but, you know, that's four pictures of Chloe because Mocha will just never be featured on this segment sorry guys never gonna happen no justice uh never never uh somebody said like maybe one day if if she passes when she when you know god god fearing she passes away you know then maybe like said no no probably not maybe we do a private ceremony but not on air (laughs) all right guys let's go ahead and get started then shall we now that we are uh 50 minutes into the show ladies and gentlemen so if you didn't know Four years ago, the Oscars set forth to right all of the wrongs that have been done by white people in the the industry of Hollywood. They put in new guidelines for diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of those guidelines went into effect this year, the year 2024. And after looking at the winners for the Oscars uh, in uh, in this past week, doesn't matter. Seems like it was all white people that ended up winning anyway. So we're right back to Oscars so white where we were yeah. not but that are, long you, ago. Do you guys know the theory behind this hmm. as to why it keeps happening? Why? So uh, I think it's like pretty well understood that Hollywood is very divided over the Israel stuff. 
okay. Israel and Palestine. And so a, a bunch of actors are Palestine and a lot of like POC people in particular. And mm-hmm. then there's a, the Israel faction. And I mean, th- th- like the rumor is that this is like pushback for being pro-Palestine. It's like uh, it's like hmm. watching a bunch of Marxists fall into a bucket together and have to beat each other up to get out. Uh, this was uh, the, the real reason here. I mean, th- that is probably a huge part of it. But the thing is, is the new requirements that were put into place are essentially all smoke and mirrors. And I'll explain to you how. Uh, this is an article that was out on Breitbart last week. It says, the reality is, f- uh, is pretty simple. Like much of Hollywood, it's an illusion. The Academy's DEI mandates are broken down into four sections. On-screen diversity, cast and story, uh, behind-the-camera diversity, like the crew, industry access, studio provides internships and training for women and minorities, and D, audience development, women and minorities in executive roles in the studio marketing, PR, and distribution. They only have to fulfill two of those requirements. None of them require them to be the ones that are on screen. So as long as they are bringing in uh, executives that are that are younger in minorities and or women and following those guidelines from these bottom two tier categories, they're fine to put as many white people on screen as possible, which proves to you that they don't actually care about making meaningful change, at least not in the way that they perceive it. Right? Also, uh, any women are still considered diverse employees, yes. so they happen to be 50 percent of the population. This basically means it's almost impossible to not meet the eligibility requirements. And it's also almost impossible to do the math on which movies fit the requirements. So they're going to just let everyone through. Uh, But literally yesterday, like I was on Stream of Valiant Renegade and and Mexican Iron Man was on there. And he's saying, like, it's amazing how white women have just kind of pushed their way Mm -hmm. into being part of the diverse crowd. Right? Yeah, they did. They yeah. have just they kind of superseded. They pushed themselves to the front of the line. Do you think so? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> I don't. I, I I truly think that like modern day white women are being seen with the same contempt as like boomer old men. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Not within Hollywood, maybe maybe. I I, th- I think so. Like truly. Uh, Holly- I mean, well, these days it's starting to be a thing where you know you can't be considered truly diverse unless you've got multiple diversity requirements on your on your rap sheet so you can't just be gay you also have to be a gay minority yeah you can't just be a woman you have to be a woman of color like and and you just add those on layer by layer like like i haven't heard like a story of a gwyneth paltrow that didn't have some intonation of like oh my god roll my eyes Somewhere in the world, a woman's summit just happened. Just now. <laughs> just now. It, it, it was just happening. This is I mean, feminism is definitely still um, in charge in Hollywood. So uh, this was a tweet from Peachy Keenan. Uh, best picture, all white cast. Best supporting actor, white guy. Best actor, white guy. Best actress, white chick. Best director, white guy. Mm-hmm. Best director of a short film, white guy. Best song, white chick. And of course, uh, best picture, Oppenheimer. Best supporting actor, Robert Downey Jr. Best actor, Killian Murphy. Best actress was Emma Stone for Poor Things. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Emma Stone's win was the most controversial because she was nominated for best actress against Lily Gladstone stone from killers of the flower moon who happens to be native american and when emma stone won the award they pictured her sitting there and her reaction was like oh no (laughs) like she could see the backlash that was about to come so someone said the look on emma stone's face that says they're gonna crucify me for winning over lily gladstone I've never seen anyone so horrified to win an Oscar. And someone said, well, maybe she knows that as of 96 years, she is now the 94th white recipient of her award. I would be effing horrified and embarrassed. Some Kobe stats right there. And then they said, uh, I think the the biggest disappointment other than Lily Gladstone's loss was Killers of the Flower Moon having 10 nominations and winning nothing. Worst Oscars robbery in recent memory. So do you think that this is related to the the fact that there's a certain factions that are pro palestine I've heard I've heard this, that it's it, that it has been hilarious watching Hollywood try and figure out where they stand on this issue because it's the first time where they're not all universally in sync on how to deal with these things. Obviously, there have been casting rewrites and all of these people that have 
lost work for it. This was my favorite of those responses, though, was from someone who's named Ch Chef Guevara <laughs> on, on Twitter. says, she should have refused it. He's trolling. I'm assuming he's trolling people here. Uh, and so he says, that's not how it works. And he says, yes, it is. <laughs> no, she shouldn't. And then he just starts calling people names. Uh, and, and then somebody says, I worked incredibly hard for this award, but unfortunately I'm going to have to refuse it because my skin is white. And ironically, yes, that's how they see it in Hollywood. I think that the reason for this one specifically might be that Emma Stone was in a movie that promotes pedophilia and Hollywood is all about celebrating that. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, um, they're like, look, we would give the award to the, to the Native American. The ultimate minorities. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we can't because there's somebody who's promoting pedophilia, which we have to yeah. let you know that we enjoy. Yeah, which is true art. So yeah. for context, the movie is called Poor Things, and essentially it's about this mother who is pregnant. She commits suicide, and a twisted scientist replaces her brain with the brain of her baby daughter. Wow. Um, and what ensues in the film is that this baby in an adult woman's body engages in a bunch of sexual debauchery with adult men. And that's supposed to be a read on, um, you know sexual liberation and like fighting the patriarchy and stuff and like if you don't like it then you just don't have media literacy you know you're just you just don't get art you don't if get you don't it. think that that's good and and you don't think that should be promoted it's a baby brain in a woman's body yeah. yes how would they ever tell the difference hey <laughs> there was uh so josh denny somebody else said this was another tweet the the jews in hollywood at the oscars tonight should be ashamed of themselves not a single bold statement about israel's right to defend itself from genocidal terrorism liberals willingly endorsing their own annihilation in the name of tolerance okay so it is but is so is that a wink at my theory then yeah, well, there's there also a pro-Palestine protest going on simultaneously with the Oscars in L.A. Which is hilarious because they, they shoo them away the same way whenever these things go on. They, they shepherd out the homeless people mm -hmm. because Hollywood doesn't act ju just like the awards. It's obvious. It's actually kind of funny how analogous all of this is, right? Just like the awards, which are supposed to uh, inject diversity, it really is all just a veneer. A facade, mm -hmm. just like how it looks outside, where, oh my gosh, it looks so beautiful out there. Well, yes, because you got rid of all the homeless people who will be back the day after tomorrow when you're done. So is it, in to is it possible that, um, just as we were saying that, I don't know if this was on camera or off, that basically like owning the libs, quote unquote, it, like just doesn't, is, isn't as funny anymore or as fun. Mm -hmm. um, is this... You know, like all these industries and, and marketing and all these things, since the digital age, they pretty much all run on metrics. Okay. And, you know, metrics typically take like four to five years to accumulate and, and study when, when it's like super big data source. So I wonder if they are getting, I don't know, like data samples from four years ago. It's like, I mean, people are honestly fed up like it, it's not even working with liberals and progressives like it's a super minority we're losing money and, and they have that st those statistics and they're just reining it back mm -hmm. because my I, I think back of this girl that was gonna be snow white and everyone was like oh like she like they want her off the role because she was insufferable and i feel like yes she was insufferable but it was literally a equally equivalent to every single insufferable feminist or progressive that has had a spotlight on them and f with her like the dam broke I, I, I truly equally insufferable to Gal Gadot in the very same interviews most notably what Gal Gadot Sorry, was what? sitting there next to Rachel Zegler saying all of the same stuff right. That's what I mean, and even but... bringing it up first mm -hmm. being like you know she doesn't need the prince it's not about love and everyone loves Gal Gadot but yeah. Rachel Zegler got the lion's share of the hate for those interviews so I, I really don't understand that event but I, I feel that maybe the stats are in and they're rating this back for the next global consciousness mind virus so we got tired of owning the libs and they got tired of virtue signaling. It seems like a win-win. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think it's, I mean, they're still virtue signaling and, and we're still quote unquote owning the libs. I, I didn't watch the broadcast, but so I wouldn't know if anyone brought up Palestine or Israel on stage. I'm sure. Or, or, or Trump or whatever. Trump got brought up. T yeah. Trump did in fact get brought up by Jimmy Kimmel who was hosting and it's because 
Trump, you know, with his, with his roots in the entertainment industry, just couldn't help himself but to put in his two cents. And this was his post on Truth Social. He said, has there ever been a worse host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? His opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. Get rid of Kimmel and perhaps replace him with another washed up but cheap ABC talent, George Sloppinopoulos. He would make everybody on stage look bigger, stronger, more glamorous. Also, a really bad politically correct show tonight and for years. Disjointed, boring, and very unfair. Why don't they just give the Oscars to those that deserve them? Maybe that way their audience and TV ratings will come back from the depths. Yeah. Make America great again. <laughs> You just had to end that with Make America Great Again. And uh, it got like 6,000 retruths. So, I mean, it must be true. Pretty it must true. be true. So, Jimmy Kimmel brought up this truth social post on stage looking at his phone and did this really cringy clap back. Yeah. Do we have the clip? Uh, I had it here. So, yeah, here it is. <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, this, this doing this show is not about me. And I, I appreciate you having me. It's really about you. And. Uh, Emma and all these great actors and actresses and filmmakers, but uh, hold the phone. I thought you weren't supposed to say actresses anymore. I'm triggered. I am triggered. Uh, I was told we have like an extra minute, and um, I'm really proud of something. Uh, I, I was wondering if I could share it with you. I just got a, a review, and um, <laughs> has there ever been a worse host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? <laughs> His opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard See, to be it's, something it's which he's for not them. and never can be. <laughs> Get rid of Kimmel and perhaps replace him with another washed up but cheap ABC talent, George Sloppinopoulos. He would make everybody on stage look bigger, stronger, and more glamorous. Blah, blah, blah. Make America great again. <laughs> See if you can guess which former president just posted that on Truth Social. Anyone? No? Well, thank you, President Trump. Um, thank you for watching. I'm surprised you're still watching. Isn't it past your jail time? Wow. He's, he's so joyless. He really got him on that one. Yeah. Uh, interesting that he left out the part of the post that mentioned their ratings flopping. Yep. Can't he, mention that on air. He's like remarkably joyless. Yeah, like he he doesn't seem for a comedian. <laughs> no, but for for a host, for, I mean, is it the point of a host that they just be like charismatic and trying to carry the show? Uh, not anymore. I think the idea is they got to be more like window dressing. They're just there to be as unobtrusive as possible. Since yeah. um, maybe Ricky Gervais's Golden Globes yes. incident. Yep. Just don't attract any attention. Yep. Also, I want to point out the other funny thing that happened is that um, the one award that Barbie managed to win was for best song, but it wasn't "I'm Just Ken" because they couldn't give it to they couldn't give it to Ryan Gosling, so they gave it to Billie Eilish. So it's diverse because yeah. she's female. Exactly. And gay. It's very. It's <laughs> oh very, yeah, very and um, bisexual allegedly. Supposedly. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's all a shit show. And when I look at stuff like this, the great thing about these types of segments is like, you don't even have to watch this crap anymore. You can just follow along on Twitter yeah. and, and catch the moments. It didn't seem for the most part heavily political um, in, any, in any sense of the word. The other great, the one good segment was when Danny DeVito and Arnie were on stage and they bring up um, Michael Keaton. Uh, and he goes like, because he's played Batman and Danny mm. DeVito and uh, they were both in Batman movies. Yeah. So that was like the one good part of the whole show. So, yeah, it, it is what it is. But that's not the only thing that happened here. Also, you know, what, what was going on with John Cena? Is this <laughs> ritualistic humiliation? Well, no, um... there, are, there are a lot of theories flying around right now. At the Oscars, John Cena made an appearance looking to be totally nude um, with one little announcement card in front of his crotch and he was doing this to present best costume design ironically and he was sitting there next to Jimmy Kimmel on stage yeah just appearing to be totally naked and a lot of people are saying that this was a Hollywood humiliation ritual being performed on John Cena and I remember the same things were being said about him when he was cross-dressing on set of uh, Ricky Stenicki, Ricky Stenicki yep. his new movie on Amazon Prime 
Um, because, you know, if he's a masculine looking dude, you have to buck break him in the public eye to keep him in line with the elites. There Are the elites is. planning this and they're conspiring together to humiliate him? Margot Robbie liked it. Seems like it, yeah. Oh, he doesn't seem humi- I don't know. I mean, this is obviously choreographed. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just feel that this is. Well, I guess I'll let it finish. Maybe the most important thing there is. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, this just feels like. So they're in a writer's room and they and they're like, okay, so ratings are gonna be down. We need three viral moments. What can yeah. we do? Yeah. Put John Cena naked. Are, are you down? You're down. Cool. And it's. The, it's like these moments in movies that they, they kind of pull you from immersion because they're it, they're so wacky and kind of like Gen Z like in in, a, in in like an ambiance that doesn't fit and it's it just feels obvious for me maybe I'm I'm just I'm I'm too marketing brain and I always see it but it's like okay so this is the moment we want them to clip. So yeah. and it, it was viral. it was on every website. Right. And we're doing it. it. We're, we're literally part so, of yeah. the problem. I don't I don't see this as the humiliation ritual. I think it's in line with the movie he's making right now. Somebody else in the chat pointed out he's always looking for an excuse to get naked. Certainly. Is he known for that? Uh, and the other thing that's funny about this is like the, if you look at uh, what he's been doing, so he's promoting his new movie with like an OnlyFans which has deliberately um sexualized sounding like he goes my first cream pie and then he gets hit in the face with a pie. Okay. okay, so it's it's a shtick, right? It's advertising a movie, and and I'm I'm with you on this one. I I just see this as one of these things where it is an industry that loves degeneracy and stuff like this, and I, I don't see it as a bunch of shadowy elites, you know, a cabal yeah. of people. Well, no, entertain the idea yeah. just for a second, okay? So. Liz Crocken said, no surprise John Cena's walking on stage naked, stage naked at the Oscars during primetime TV that children are most likely watching. No children are watching the Oscars! <laughs> no one. Zero! Zilch! Nada! She continued, Nada. this is not just a humiliation ritual. The Hollywood PDF files, rapists, and perverts are certainly getting off on this. I'm sure Jimmy Kimmel is as well. Hold on, Let's not forget a that... Mm -hmm. This is a $20 one here uh, from CJ McLean. It says, could, uh, could be China who paid Hollywood to humiliate him. They're probably still pissed that he mentioned Taiwan. Also look up the John Cena uh, Zena meme if, you ever, if you've never seen it before. Yeah, if you ever heard his um, apologizing in Mandarin to the yeah. people of yeah. China for <laughs> daring to say that Taiwan existed. <laughs> Let's not forget that Jimmy Kimmel had Tom Hanks do a skit on his show Sexualizing Little Girls where he called a child a sexy baby and had her sing Talk Dirty to me also jimmy kimmel ran another skit on his show featuring an fbi identified pdf file symbol in it and and a pizza pizza it is pdf file code that's been confirmed by the fbi doj records and local law enforcement agencies these people are sick okay all of that might be true right that doesn't make this true okay right right Two things connected elsewhere does not mean that every single thing that happens in one industry is connected. I mean, that's what every conspiracy hinges upon. It is all yes. of those pieces of red yarn. My, my thing is, I, I think as a culture, we're, we're so desensitized to nudity and, and sexuality that this, this is just garden variety like shtick. Oh, and Another one said um, he wasn't fully naked. There are the photos yeah, he was of him. wearing. He something. wears the modesty garment. The modesty garment. Yes. Uh, another one said Jimmy Kimmel and the Illuminati put John Cena through an obvious satanic shaming ritual during the Oscars tonight. A blatantly sexual provocation for American men to remind you who the real wolves of society are. All the signs are right there. They don't even try to hide it. So they pointed out there is confusion and embarrassment on John Cena's face. Jimmy Kimmel is in a dominant stance. His toes are protected by status because he's wearing shoes. Um, <laughs> then mean, there are satanic references in the shadowy figures on set. Here's a, here's a photo with all of this information there, yes. Oh, yeah. No! And they're showing John Cena's toes. 
Thank you. I don't know what the satanic reference is. I don't know if it's satire or what, but... What is the it, satanic I mean, I reference? Um, and then Razor Fist also said, I've seen... I've never seen anyone more desperate for mainstream success than John Cena. If a Hollywood executive told him to swallow a chainsaw, it'd be halfway down his digestive tract before he finished the sentence. But he's insanely famous. We also talk about Hollywood being full of degenerates. If he's a degenerate, why would this be humiliating for him? Mm -hmm. But isn't his brand like relatively wholesome? Uh, he doesn't. He's. I don't think he's a. He's not full time with WWE anymore, and that's certainly that's a good point. Like, but it's still his so, brand. No, it's yeah. So the idea that you know he he does all the Make a Wish, uh, foundation yeah. stuff, and he's very very popular with kids at WWE. But he's been out of WWE full time for several years now, and really is going mainstream with Hollywood. So you know, make of it what you will. I, I just, I, I'm always reticent to, to make a bunch of connections on literally everything all the time. I tend to think that a degenerate writer, you know, wrote a degenerate piece for this show and they got the guy who's making a movie that has degeneracy in it and they put it in. How do you know the movie uh, has That's just, it's an R-rated it. comedy. So that, at least from the reviews I was talking about, like that though, that scene of him in the, in the skirt and the thigh high socks is from that well, there's that, that scene of him dressed up like Britney Spears. Yes. Um, from the Look, Baby One More Time maybe music video. I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I could be 110% wrong. I just don't think it's the type of thing where, like, like, if you start seeing these things everywhere, it gets to be a bit much. Now, if, I, if somebody finds a memo from one member of the Illuminati to another member of the <laughs> Illuminati that confirms this, I am happy to say that I am wrong. Okay, well, Destiny. You need your study? <laughs> I'm obviously being sarcastic yeah, but yeah. yes yeah there is a hollywood cult but we don't know if this was their doing yes it could have been it could have been from a a, a wholly different cult it could have been somebody other than the illuminati Are there, like, i just feel that rival cults in hollywood it's it's so tame if if it was uh as they say like a satanic thing I, you know you don't get what i'm saying you think it would actually be sam smith dressed up like the devil yeah, I, it would be something a lot more a provocative or like shaming a white guy like come on you're you're more likely to see the demonic references at the grammys than something like what do you, think? Do, you th do you think this was uh do you think this was a uh, ritualistic shaming um maybe not consciously planned that way but Hollywood's disposition toward masculinity is to shame and vilify it. So yes. that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a display of how they feel about masculinity. It but is another jab at modernity, uh, not at modernity, but like a jab at what I, I don't well, know. Like if masculine. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's got Roadhouse coming out where he's playing an MMA, where he's fighting an MMA fighter. Are they gonna Are they gonna do this to Jake Gyllenhaal and then to Conor McGregor next? I feel like the general sentiment is that... If it was, um, I feel like if it was actually true, then it would have been Alan Richson they would have tr they tried to trot out there to get him to both uh, decry his faith, mm. right? Well, he's not famous enough, mm -hmm. so... I mean, I, I, he's, he was just in the last fast... I think he's on his way up. He's, uh, yeah. he's on his John way. I, mean, famous, I think the joke is juxtaposed to the enormity in his size. So, yes. be, so it being yeah. like, oh... He is in a moment of weakness, despite the fact that he's like this ginormous, roided out, jacked guy. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It, it's it's just like a very simple just juxtaposition, like a really simple gag, and. Okay, yeah, uh, definitely not a fed. Says, how is making all the women in the crowd hot, un hot and bothered, killing masculinity though? Yes, Margot but, Robbie um, looked more than a little bit enamored with what she saw. I mean, I think it's. I guess this thing, like it's like she's laughing at him, not with him. Traditionally, sex sells is thought of as a one-way street. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, again, it's like a comment on modernity. Like, oh, like the ladies are in charge now. Here's your little like piece of beefcake. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is this making sense? Like, a, I mean, he he wasn't up there doing like a Chippendales strip tease. Or he anything may as well. Like that. Well, I mean, uh, what's it called? That movie was, um, what's it called? The Magic Mike. Magic Mike was yes. a thing ten yeah. years ago. Yeah. 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 Don't want to see that. Uh, it is now. It is fair to point out that they didn't do this with a woman. They would have never done well, no, this that's, with a. That's what I mean. Is like, 
you know, a man's body is seen as something to laugh at, whereas a woman's body is something to be revered. And uh, House and Habit that's had definitely... like a, House and Habit had some thoughts on the Oscars. Basically, she said she's too busy to cover them right now with all the other work she's doing. But she had some thoughts, and she said like, uh, now all the hot women just go to the Oscars naked. And she goes, we want to imagine you naked, not actually see you naked. What? Really? Because I looked at a lot of the red carpet fashion and I didn't think all of it was really that risque. Yeah. I, if, every time I see people analyze the fashion, it's like this person wore this dress that this other person had worn years ago. Like, what's the allegory that they're trying to communicate? Somebody says naked chicks aren't funny. They could do this with a, with a fat naked chick. That would be considered funny. It says they wouldn't do that. I don't know. No, everyone would get really yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be both. Yeah. Cr- G- wow, she's incredible, beautiful, and what are you laughing at? Like simultaneously. Mm-hmm. That would take the fun out of it. All right. Let's go to Super Chat. Let's go to Super Chat. Shane H. Wilder said, Happy Monday, Brett, Mary, and Dane. I saw Cabrini over the weekend and did a little write up of it on X. Well, I think Mary would enjoy it. I don't think it would be Brett's cup of tea. That was uh, that was my takeaway from the trailer. Was I said, look, I I got limited time in the day. Look, I got. I, <laughs> What's it about? Uh, Mary, it's, it's an about, Italian it's woman. It's an Italian woman. That's all I know. She's, She's an, an Italian, Italian woman. woman. Um, you, you should go. No, see. I think that she was the first um, canonized saint from um, from the U.S. But I might be wrong about that. I had never heard of her before. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, it, Evan the King, trailer doesn't make it entirely clear. Evan King in the chat says, Ricky Stenicki was sadly not very funny. I miss great comedies. Um, Jacob Paradis said, I urge everyone who's pro-life to go to LifeSite News and sign the petition being sent to the bishops to excommunicate Biden for his pro-abortion stance at his State of the Union address. I didn't know that such a thing existed. I mean, I highly doubt that it's going to result in anything. Is there like a is is there like a change dot like Christian change dot org? I guess that they're running the petition off of that okay. website, but um, I yeah, mean, the highly Pope unlikely. Is like, the Pope is like a garden variety progressive, so I don't. In some respects, he comes off that way. I mean, yeah. there's no real way to know. Let's do two more. Shane H. Wilder said, don't get me started, Jacob. I went ballistic when he brought up abortion, IVF, and then took the Lord's name in vain, all in the course of a minute. I didn't watch the State of the Union address. All of this is just making me not want to watch it. Um, He also said, okay, the cheesy chicken crispinata is just a fruit pie (laughs) with chicken and cheese instead of fruit. Not the best, but not the worst. Three out of five stars. Sounds disgusting. It was not good. You had it? Yeah. Uh, and one time is enough for me. Like, it's just... It looks titillating in the pictures. In the pictures, of course. In the yeah. pictures, it always looks great. But no, it didn't live up to my hopes. All right, let's hold off on the rest. And let's come back after the fact. Mary, tell us what's going on with Jimmy Carr. A comedian named Jimmy Carr is getting flamed right now because he made a joke at the expense of an audience member who happened to be deaf. He called this woman up on stage and noticed that she had a hearing aid and he started making jokes that she, after transcribing it on her phone, she found them very offensive to her deaf community. So this says that this woman was left absolutely insulted by making her making the punchline of his joke. She said uh, her name is Carly Allen and she has gone to the press about this. She said, I used, um, or she, she was picked out of the front row by Jimmy Carr. She was wearing a beret, and he was asking her why she was wearing a beret. Quote, I used my right hand to lift my beret, exposing my hearing aid. I hoped he was at least a decent guy and would move on, knowing I was deaf. It didn't work. It had the opposite effect, as I was like a sitting deaf duck now. And she said she was using a transcribing app on her phone to read what Jimmy Carr was saying during the set. And he addressed her again, asking if she was going to, quote, call for backup from the French resistance because she was wearing a beret. And then he was talking about how you can say anything about deaf people because they can't hear you. I was shocked. This isn't comedy. Comedy is an amazing tool for progressive change. Ah! Yet Jimmy decided to use his platform to put down those who have a tough life. 
There's a joke and then there's absolutely insulting. It's vile to the deaf community. It's just not acceptable. He doesn't need to do that. He's rich enough. I've spent far too long feeling miserable and ashamed of my hearing loss because of the stigma attached to it. She said, um, basically, you know, she didn't realize until after the fact, but she was highly offended that she was the butt of his jokes. Um, there should be some type of like screening process to get in. You should be forced to be roasted openly if you want to get into a, into a comedy club. Well, I mean, comedians do have a habit of, That's of heckling their audience, they, roasting they should their do. audience. Comedy and it's clubs, a two-way street. Comedy clubs should hire journeyman comedians to roast every single person that comes in there. And anyone that can't take the joke, you're out. You can't do it. The whole, like, if you're going to, I'm not saying you don't have a right to be offended. I'm saying that you shouldn't be offended if you choose to go to these things in person, especially if you know who the person is beforehand. Yeah, I don't know if she was exactly a fan of his, but if she is a fan of Jimmy Carr, she should know that he has a track record for making what the hell is the jokes. Stigma? What the hell is the stigma? I, you know what? That let me stomp well, too. Well, as everybody. someone who is uh, half deaf, can you explain to us how you're stigmatized? I have uh, no clue. Okay, so like, uh, so I guess I can be half offended uh, <laughs> about all of this. Like, the, the the only things that I've ever noticed for me is that like, okay, so if I'm in like a room of people, right? Um, people on here might even notice as well. Like, I'll either talk too loud or too quiet for the room because I can't hear it adequately. That will happen to me. And I say what a lot to people. I say what yeah. until they're sick of repeating themselves. Whatever. I don't know what the stigma is. I'm not wholly deaf so I don't know what this is for all I know is that as a, uh, as a participating member of society it is your job to make the make the decision beforehand whether you can handle being in an environment like this okay and the part about comedy being a, a, a tool of progressive change is vomit inducing yeah. vomit like, inducing why would you go to a comedy club if you think that the purpose of comedy is promoting progressivism yes like not to make people laugh also bender the offender sent twenty dollars people who get offended by a comedian are soft softer than snowflakes in the middle of winter so, i did see somebody mention deaf comedy jam but th this is what i mean about like just rampant progressivism not just not being the same so okay so story Comedian offends people, person is offended, makes statement, done, right? In the past, I feel it would have been like, comedian makes a statement, person is offended, uh, person is now exalted and comedian's life ruined and join in on the bashing. Like that, that later part, those later two parts, like, they're completely removed from the equation anymore. Like who, who like what cancellation has stuck like I mean, they a, recently the tried to cancel Ricky Gervais because he was making jokes about kids with terminal cancer. Oh, um, geez. Yeah, he, like, made a joke where he called a hypothetical, like, non-existent child with cancer baldy. And oh. there were some, <laughs> there were some um, parents of kids with cancer or kids that passed away from cancer who were, you know, really deeply offended by it. And... Yeah, I understand their perspective and all that, but, you know, don't expose your t yourself to that type of material if you know that that's a sensitive subject for you. And also, don't police what he's allowed to joke about, you know? When does that, when exactly does it stop becoming a joke and become vile? I, I want to know. I want to know the actual line. Is there like a specific word? Is it a specific set of words? What is the criteria that makes something no longer a joke? Nothing. It's how you perceive it. And he is not responsible for how you perceive the humor that he's giving. I think that it's fine to acknowledge that life can be tougher for some people based on their attributes. Like, obviously, you know, if you're deaf, there are parts of your life, many parts of your life that are much more difficult than the rest of the population, that's fine. But that's not because, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that's because people hate you because you're deaf, you know? It's because you just naturally, you know, don't have an ability that the rest of society has, mm -hmm. and that's tough. But what you do have is the ability to laugh at yourself, just like everybody else. Yep. 
Uh, I, I, I think I've told the story multiple times about like the, the time that I went to the grocery store and like a lady asked me to get something off a high shelf and it was like the greatest day of my life. I was like, let's go! <laughs> I'm five foot five, okay? That's, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity when somebody asks you to get something off a high shelf, right? Okay, so I do this. It's like, the, I was about to send a text to someone. You like, felt seen, heard, I, I was validated. Like, I was like, bro. You're not gonna believe what just happened, no right? No one Okay, you. I two <laughs> aisles down, I look at something because he goes, "Do you need help getting that off the top shelf?" And it was like instantly, somebody decided karma. The universe goes, "Not so fast, boy." Like, imagine if Jimmy Carr pulled you up on stage and started making jokes about how short you are. It would be fine. It would be like, hilarious. You would just take it in stride. The, I don't know what the, the chat. The chat every day takes the opportunity to roast me. Now, I'm not saying they do it well. You know, that's up for debate. Yeah. But the point is, <laughs> you have to be a good sport about it. That's part of the yeah. job. It's not even part of the job for this. It's part of being a human being in a world that doesn't protect and coddle you at every step of the way. My favorite bread troll is the like the Happy Wednesday bread. When it's like Monday. Yes. I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. They what? do well. They, they do like to gaslight me. That is their their favorite thing. Make to do Brett here. question his sense of reality. Oh, that that happens all the time, anyways. That's, yeah. That's that's a, that's a that's a constant in my life. Also, um, it, because this article is trying to drag Jimmy Carr, they brought up his other controversies. So um, let's talk about those. In 2019, while filming another show, Jimmy Carr was slammed for making jokes about fat women and about female genital mutilation. In 2022, he again said what was deemed offensive. There were comments about the Gypsy, Roma, and Traveler community. And he also made previous jokes about deafness, telling an audience in 2018 that he received complaints for, quote, saying, deafness is getting to be quite a problem for me. I never thought I'd hear myself say that. Mm -hmm. So... Unless this lady had never heard of Jimmy Carr before in her life, she ought to be somewhat aware that, you know, he makes edgy jokes. And if you're sitting in the front row, you might be involved in them. Yep. Uh, I just, somebody in, somebody in the chat said, uh, height jokes and jokes about kids with cancer are not the same thing. Humor okay, is, can humor I, is can humor. Can I interject? Like, I, I, I think this is the first time I've like talked about this, but I had like my own like recent stint with mm -hmm. cancer. And you know, the the being treated like a like a wounded puppy feels worse than the like be, having like some people making a joke about it. Yeah. So I mean, I I guess different people have like different sensibilities, but the point is, is that within the world, it's your you have the opportunity to either not listen, not watch, not you know take in the entertainment. You don't have a right to tell somebody else what they can and cannot say within the laws of free speech, right? And also, you, it's, it's within your power or my power, if those jokes offend you, to just not look at it and not watch it. All you're going to do by telling somebody they can't make jokes like that is make them want to make them more, or even if they bend the you know bend the knee and, and kind of acquiesce, they're not gonna do it in good faith. They're doing it because you've shamed them into doing so. That doesn't, do, that doesn't get rid of this type of humor. And I feel like there's a subsect of, of humanity that doesn't comprehend that humor in a way is it, so it serves a purpose of like in, like instant release, but it also serves a purpose of like normalization. Yeah. So the the fact that something is like being brought up, and it's being like called it, it called into attention and heightened to its like positive or negative qualities. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I just don't understand how the crowd that's always talking about representation doesn't understand that. It's flattering in an unflattering way. Wouldn't you want to be seen yeah. as just like everybody else? If the idea is inclusion, wouldn't you want to be considered just as uh, viable to be made fun of as the other people in the show if being made fun of at these shows is considered what is normal? They always talk mm -hmm. about normalization, right? Yeah. You're integrating I that into, let, the, into the humor. I, I looked at a photo of this woman. She looks a little bit cray, cray, cray. Like she looks a little bit... Is that the stigma? She looks a little bit unhinged, okay? Like, if I saw this uh, the photo out of context of this woman, I would think she's a little bit crazy. So I wouldn't let this woman, you know, paint your opinion of all of the deaf community, and I wouldn't let her speak no, for the entire not. deaf oh community because no. she's yeah. obviously, you know, a bit of a clown. Um, and she has be clowned herself, and 
tried to drag up this whole community with her and they're not involved i mean if it's if it's if anything that we've learned since 2016 is that if you you can break the current state of society towards the humorless and those that can comp at least comprehend humor because i i feel that in a way and i i'm I'm truly not saying this to be i don't know like i i I mean this quite literally i feel like there's a subsect of the population that does not grasp that it's comedy does not understand the root of the joke does not understand the purpose of the joke and does not see the purpose of it and so they cling to like oh that that hurt like to being offended yeah Mm -hmm. i just i when i i don't want to live in a world where with no humor and i especially don't want to live in a world where humor is dictated by whoever has the most politically correct take on something it's just i mean for for the ricky gervais situation i feel like the the linchpin of that was trying to pressure netflix to take down his special which is out of line if you're just a parent of a, a kid who was diagnosed with cancer or maybe passed away from cancer like that's incredibly sad and if you say that you're offended by that like that's fine i mean no one asked but also that's fine if you want to say that but don't try to literally take someone's livelihood away and Brett, to it. your point that I, so i don't want to live in a humorless world either and so i i think something that's also happening is that not only is it humorless in in the points where they want to interject humor it's things that aren't funny so for example like the the like the john cena like uh, situation where he's like walking naked i feel like that was meant to be perceived as humorous and if you're there physically it probably is it's probably funny it's like oh my well, god it's the, it's the he's fact naked. it's the costume award right that's the yeah. right and then it goes to the costume change yeah yeah you're right but it's less impactful so if you're there physically, I feel like it's impactful because like he's literally naked. But in the digital media where everything's like this, uh, I don't know how to say this well, word. Well, we feel English. like we've already seen John Cena naked, so like maybe, the, yeah, like he's always the... shirtless. But also like since there's no since the there's the, like the different planes, it, it like it's a flat image. So it, it it just doesn't have the impact of like person in a whole room with people that are clothed naked. You know what I mean? I think it's just like we're allowed to make fun of John Cena because he's straight, cis, mm. white, male, and he's strong and masculine. And those are the things that in yeah. our like Marxist system, we vilify those things. Yeah. More than a few of the my friends, uh, the, the root of many of our jokes have to do with dead parents. Yeah. We share that uh, in common. I have a couple of memes that I send to people, you know, right off the bat to gauge, you know, yeah. where are they like one of my favorites is the picture of Stalin. It says dark humor is like food. Not everybody gets it. And, and that's the type of thing that you can send to someone. And, and then my, the stuff that I send people, the stuff me and Dane sent stuff like send each other is fucked up. It and is. that's where my humor lies. And I have no problem with that <laughs> in all respects. And it can be vile and it can be unbelievably uncalled for. The amount of 9-11 memes that I send to people, <laughs> which are essentially making fun of the death of thousands of people, probably would give some people pause. But that is my sense of humor. And I've got my own stuff going on in life right now. And sometimes and, it's dead parents in 9-11 yes, memes. <laughs> okay? And all I'm saying is that the ability to distinguish the difference between a joke about something tragic and individual experiences with those in which this happened. So for instance, I sent me I send memes like that all the time. Well, I also just watched this episode from the show Third Watch that took place. It was a show about these cops and EMS workers in New York City. And the third season started right after... 9-11 and they did this unbelievably impactful episode where they're not just playing their characters they're also talking to themselves and they're talking to real first responders and people who were there at ground zero right i can watch that feel all sorts of actual emotions towards what i'm watching empathy sympathy horror and still make those jokes because there is a time a place and a tone for everything mm-hmm. that the human brain is far more complicated and can dissect and take in way more information and distinguish between things far more efficiently than people give it credit for. Yeah, I think they just think um, people are too stupid to differentiate tone and time and place. I, You know, I think that may be you like giving them 
like like almost even a courtesy like i truly believe it's like they don't even comprehend humor Oh, you well, they don't they're, have, they're like, so humorless they don't even get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, they lack a theory of mind for anyone they disagree with. They don't think anyone they disagree yeah. with has an inner life or any reasons no, they, for why they, they think the things they do or feel the way they feel. It's like those studies that always parroted that uh, like a right winger can perfectly predict the views of a yeah, yeah. Not not even predict, but describe the views of a left winger in a non cartoonish way. And that the, the left winger can't even you begin not, to yeah. to create the phrase and so oh they just hate they're just hateful they were just born that way yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, they're irredeemable they're basically racism. not people basically <laughs> yeah and so this is so humor is guttural like uh, you can fake a laugh but fake laughter can be identified it's like oh you, you like you kind of pushed it you know what i mean that that didn't it wasn't genuine whereas a real life a real laugh is like it's organic you feel it it has a sound it has a tone it has a feeling that reverberates within the the yeah. crowd and i feel like they're so humorless that they're used to the fake laughs oh yeah so i mean it's like all of the laughs at dylan mulvaney's comedy set and all oh, of the laughs at like hannah gadsby's netflix oof. special yeah the hannah gadsby one was really Ugh. it was uh, really something let's go to super chats Quite Blackfield said, old car finally sold. Here's some money. Sup, every woman. Got a tight two-minute opinion on Sweet Baby Inc. Gamergate 2 seems a little overblown. Is this Gamergate 2? I don't, I don't feel it's like nowhere near as impactful. No. Uh, well, it's no, not it's the not. same. It's not the same thing, though. A lot of people like uh, go watch. If you guys don't know what they're talking about, about D, uh, about Sweet Baby Inc., which is essentially a narrative consultancy company that helps you decide just how, how, how to help make your game way more diverse and inclusive. And the head of the company uh, was found on an old video saying, uh, if the company doesn't want to use a service like ours, scare the crap out of them by telling them exactly what's going to happen to them online if they don't acquiesce to what we want and then of course uh they're the the head of the company has also been seen saying that we can't be racist to white people people who work for the company were seen dissing uh akira toriyama uh right after he he passed away and of course they were responsible for a bunch of failed games obviously uh suicide squad killed the justice league being the most recent of those a lot of channels in the pop culture space are covering this topic very very thoroughly uh, i do recommend going out and checking out the 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 Clownfish TV video is about 31 minutes. Um, it's just neon. It's really, really good. It's really, really informative. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on Valiant Renegade's stream yesterday, but uh, it is crazy how uh, gamers always seem to be a lightning rod for these types of stories. I think so. The thing is, I, I definitely don't think it's Gamergate Part 2 because there, there is an, a theory. There's two theories as to where rampant progressivism became, uh, began. One is after Occupy Wall Street, and the second one is post-Gamergate. So it, it is one of the cornerstone moments in society, and this, I mean, this seems like something that will be forgotten oh, like a week from now. The second thing that I want to talk about, did you guys talk about Anita Sarkeesian's? Yep. Yeah, that came up on Friday. Oh my her, goodness, the wedding themed, themed 40th, 40th birthday. birthday. Mm -hmm. okay. What are your thoughts? I mean, it. it, it what, just, what can I say? It speaks for itself. Yeah, truly. Basically. Like, <laughs> I feel bad for her. I felt really bad for Honestly. her. But I mean, could it have- But also I don't, but also I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't have happened to a better person. <laughs> Uh, I pointed out Sketch Therapy mentioned basically yesterday what I said on the stream is uh, what they're doing is they're showing up it's just imagine some you know person who works for this company showing up to a bunch of AAA gaming companies with a bat like it's the 60s or the 70s and you work for the mob and you go into a store and you go sure would be a shame if somebody broke your company and then they break the counter that's literally what she they're does like, wait what happened to Hogwarts Legacy that's gonna happen to our game Okay, we'll be fine. We'll yeah, just totally. go do that. Unfortunately, they don't. They we don't make a understand. ton of money while everyone's mad at us. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. But Thank she, you. She literally made a threat that veiled and that that, that unveiled, I guess. And to it, to those words, to the I think it's like CD Studio Red that the developers CD of Project like Red. Cyberpunk. Yeah. What, what was the name? CD, CD Project Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was literally like it would sure be a shame if you didn't hire us. Yep. So who um. Who recorded that? 
What do you mean recorded? The, it was it was done at a speech. Oh, it, it was, was public. It wasn't okay. caught on. It wasn't, it wasn't like a wiki. It was like no, no. This was something where on she, Twitter she, she, she wrote it. it. She gave it as a <laughs> okay. speech to say like scare the crap out of them. Cool. And yeah, somebody said uh, they dissed Toriyama. Yeah, basically somebody said he created the worst and the best black characters in in anime. Now that's range, and they said that like right after he died. What do they mean by that? They're, they're, I, don't, they're, I don't know. They're just saying that he created both really, really bad and uh, really, really good anime characters, but uh, uh, black were... anime characters. So the problem is that they're they're kind of spitting on the dude before he's the mm. you know the body's even cold. It's evil. T Dog said celebrities are evil. They blanket their SM accountants with sympathy for George Floyd, a criminal, and not Lake and Riley after an illegal murdered her. Yeah, that did happen. Oh, their social media accounts, I think is what they mean. Um, Mitchie Cool said, I heard it's a kind of ritual in Hollywood to emasculate the men in their club by making them wear tutus and things like that. It's not just Cena. Well, yeah. yeah, but the thing is, is Cena, like, so there's a super chat later that, that points it out that, like, Cena's always kind of had a degenerate sense of humor, which is funny because that runs headlong with his very, very wholesome image within WWE. Dude, that's what I mean. Like, I have, my conception of him is the, we use him to sell merchandise to children in WWE. Well, now that he's not the number one guy anymore, he's free to do whatever he wants. But where, where does he get, a, I guess, get this degenerate reputation from? old interviews and stuff that he brings up sex all the time and yeah. um, uh, let's do two more quite black pilled said if Brett's a normie I'm white pilled fake news I'm, <laughs> look look I'm a normie okay I'm a normie you can keep telling yourself that telling Shane H. Wilder that. said Brett you are not a normie yes. all of us are just different degrees of abnormie I like that abnormie which is neither good nor bad as long as none of us go full R word <laughs> yeah. and uh, he also said he made that clip for me uh, of you saying but you're not tribal I like the idea of seeing <laughs> you're, 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 I, you're not a tribal person no like definitely not I got like I said I, they like they were kind of dumb like dunking on me the other <laughs> night because uh, I, I criticized one of uh things Trump has proposed for 2024 where he's like I'm gonna send the the National Guard into woke cities I'm like bro you wouldn't even send the National Guard into woke Seriously. cities during 2020 uh -huh. are you are you kidding me okay, and, and I love the guy I think the dude is hilarious but as like you, holding any politician up to any level of uh, of sainthood is ridiculous and we seem to do that with our politicians these days let's uh, let's hold off on the rest let's get into the mm -hmm. big debate this is what everyone's here for Mary. yeah which way Western men yeah we have a philosophical debate right now a question that we've asked you which way western man would you pick the southern tomboy or the pageant queen and we're asking you this because a giant beef erupted on twitter over the weekend between a pageant queen and this southern tomboy influencer that she attacked her name is Hannah Barron, and here is the tweet from Samira Khan. She is a foreign policy analyst and a self-proclaimed anti-woke journalist. And here's what she said. This accent needs to be illegal, and women should be banned from doing manual labor like this. There is nothing feminine about American women. American women are literally men. Let's watch the video that she's yeah. talking about here. This is what enraged her so much. Good morning, y'all. Quick update on the house, because I've been pretty terrible about giving y'all these. Um, we took a little break for noodling season and to put out boxes. Now that it's dried in, we can do it at our own pace. But here she is. We're going to stain all that wood a darker brown. And the shutters, when we get that on, we'll have handrails, of course. There's the carport over there. Quick run through. I like her accent. It's all so charming. They're going to be exposed. And we're going to have old tin in the ceiling. Got Daddy and Paul up there working on a wall we're going to put up for the upstairs office. And we got Def Leppard playing in the background, of course. Back porch, beautiful view. And then the walkway to the carport. I'll try to be better about these. But you can also use my code HANNAH25. Uh, free plug, sell. nice. We the people hold. Got him. Okay, she just like she made so much money off of that holster yeah, brand yeah, yeah. deal. Like that I just the know most charming video I've seen Dude. in like a lifetime. Also, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't you take a southern accent over the vocal fry any any day? <laughs> well, I mean, 
this girl, she's popular for a reason, right? Like she's got hundreds of thousands of followers. I actually followed her. She, yeah, she has 1.5 million on Instagram and uh, she doesn't use Twitter because she's a normie. And uh, like she was very unfairly <laughs> attacked and Samira Khan got tons of backlash for posting this. She responded to it saying, Lebanese women are literally perfect and they're actually feminine, unlike estrogen deficient American women who hold the record for highest testosterone levels in the world. She got uh, community noted hard, in, hard on that one. Yeah, apparently there's no evidence that the USA has a, a low estrogen record or a record for highest female testosterone, all that, that would be interesting if it did. And then she posted another video of this girl, Hannah Barron, where she is um, fishing. She like picked up this catfish and is showing it on camera on TikTok. She said, high value American men should become passport bros. Don't they deserve better than the filth they are limited Fail. to in their own country? Do you agree or disagree? What are your thoughts? I think she's also engagement farming here. Oh, yeah, Hardcore, for sure. She's right? rage baiting and it definitely worked if that's what she was yeah, going yeah, for. For sure. But I mean, learn when to back down. Look at this video. Plate. Arm goes through. Gills are not messed up because all the pressure is going on that gill plate. The fish is fine. We'll turn her the loose. The fish is fine. <laughs> I know you want to eat some, but this is a big female. We got she also got ratioed um, asking who... Uh, which, oh, massively ratioed. Yes, massively ratioed with a bunch of people saying that they prefer yeah. American women. Yeah. By the way, she's gorgeous. She is. <laughs> Samira Khan also said Melania Trump is the ideal. Um, I mean, Melania Trump is beautiful as well. <laughs> yeah. Look, Melania Trump is the ideal for... Some men. Yeah. Some men. Yes. And Hannah Barron is the ideal for some men. Also, and like, why are you trying to dictate what all men find attractive or not? She's very, she, but she's very feminine looking. Like she. She's very pretty. Yeah. yeah she's pretty. She looks like young, yep. vibrant. Like I, saw, I, I don't comprehend this at all. I yeah, saw so Josie, the redheaded libertarian, get involved in this. Uh, she oh, really? Pick a lane. Uh, because Samira Khan to her during calendar gate says, why the conservatives do this? Clown emoji. <laughs> And then, and yes. then, yeah. So like, you try to put on the feminine look, and she hates on that. Yep. And then the more tomboy look, she hates on that. It just seems like she's gonna hate regardless. Th this is just right wing progressivism. It's pure. It's purity. And Hannah Hannah Barron does have for right wing people. Hannah yeah. Barron does have a Twitter. Oh really? So she actually made a response video to yes. Samira Khan. Um, in the video, she claimed that she doesn't have a Twitter anymore, though. So let's take a look at the, her her response. Okay. Here she was go. very gracious. I mean, a little catty. Good morning, y'all. I don't have a Twitter. I did at one point, but my account got removed for whatever reason. <laughs> Maybe and Elon gave it back and she didn't know. Making another account. But apparently I'm trending on Twitter right now because some girl, hey, Merle, some girl <laughs> said that my accent should be illegal. Women shouldn't do manual labor. Oh, what else did she say? American women are basically men, and she just said that I was not feminine. Ooh. And I would tell y'all this girl's <laughs> name, but I can't remember it because I don't have a clue who she is. So that should tell you how relevant this person is. But I just think it's hilarious because I grew up as the weird kid in high school who hunted and fished too much because back then it wasn't cool for women to hunt or fish or the whole country lifestyle. And I'm so proud of all the women in the outdoors now who are making that more cool or popular. <laughs> so proud of us. I think we're doing great. But I've been helping dad build houses since I was 15. When I was a senior in high school, I taught kids how to weld in ag class. So I've done not manual labor. When I think of manual labor, I think of what my dad does. I'm nowhere near that. I just help as much as I can and I try and it's fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of blue collar women out there who are also feminine. And so I just think that you should embrace your own individuality. You should be yourself. And don't worry about what anybody else said because these wow. folks talking about me and think they're going to offend me. That ship sailed a long time ago. I've been getting picked on my whole life. I grew up around men. Well, <laughs> so don't be scared to build your own box and don't try to fit in anybody else's. 
be your own person and you'll be happier in the long run because of that. And don't worry about what anybody else has to say. Hope y'all have a good one. Appreciate y'all. She's what a very well. She's very yeah, well spoken. Dude. She's very. Yeah. She's very honest. She's very forthright. And they're like charming. insulting her intelligence because she has a southern accent, which goes back to this trope: like everyone who lives in the South is unintelligent and illiterate. Yep. And she's clearly, you know, able to stand up for herself and speak for herself, like. She seems very smart, charming, sweet, beautiful. She said, I mean, I, I just want to point out that didn't she didn't turn to personal attacks. She, well, she made, she made the one yeah. uh, caddy remark irrelevant. about not, her name not okay. being important. She that, is irrelevant. And that's, and that's fine. But <laughs> that's that, a fact. I also want to point out she did all of that in one take. There was no editing yeah. to that video. She didn't stutter. She didn't screw up. She's very genuine. No Taylor Owens job cuts. Nope. Mm -hmm. No, it was, uh, it was real. <laughs> I did like this one, Anna, that Star Wars girl posted this. I figured out why Samira Khan hates Hannah Barron so much. Literally the evil queen. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. That's uh, kind of crazy. She's a woman who loves nature and nature loves her. And I'm going to end the poll, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like with at least 87% of the vote, they choose Southern Tomboy. Well, it's settled then. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, I it's just interesting that the conversation about tomboys has come up again because this is brought up with like the trans issue where girls who just happen to have different interests that are more, you know, masculine, yep. they're deemed more masculine, they're sent down the pipeline of ideology like you're now part of this community and you're not actually a girl because you have different interests and you want to present differently and you're not a girly girl because now being a woman has been totally reduced down to makeup and shopping and consumerism yep. and this weird caricature of femininity and that's not what it is it's like women I, did you read did yeah. you see alex jones's response no. Okay, so Alex so Jones responded. He said, responded to this? He said, uh, they are not masculine women. They are self-sufficient and powerful and like to have fun. The modern domesticated left cannot find their asses with both hands. They think anything natural is strange. When a woman is strong, she's not a man. She is feminine. Men with their heads screwed on straight. What a lady, uh, what a lady can do to all and work as a team to empower, to empower the family. Both my grandmothers could do it all and did. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people were pointing that out. It's not a mutually exclusive deal, yep. you know. You can do certain tasks that are, or have certain hobbies that are more masculine, and you can have others that are more feminine, and it doesn't make you less of a woman. Yeah, like, also, like, how, how can people not see that a woman would enjoy building a house? I mean, they did it for centuries. That's what I'm saying. Like, how, how do you not... Yeah, I until they got Mexicans to do it for them, apparently. <laughs> okay. uh, this is a, another tweet <laughs> that says, there's a uh, there is the definitive proof you need to see that beauty standards are not for men, a supposed beauty shaming another for legitimately just existing as a normal human being. No, no, this, this was women once again. And why are we it, it, taking the brunt for this? Did Samira Khan just let herself think that she's the pinnacle of beauty in all female standards because she won a pageant once? I guess maybe like those are the the gauge what, for did, I mean, did he just blame men for this but no this person was saying that this is uh these things that usually they do try to say that men are the problem but in oh, this case no. he's saying yeah. that no uh and if you are wondering and samira khan yes yeah, she was a beauty queen when she was younger and now she like what what who does she work for now it seems like she's like an independent okay. journalist who is a you know foreign policy analyst i don't okay. even know but look this woman in all of her photos you can see that she wears heavy amounts of makeup she has changed her face with lip filler at the very least if not other things so you know she's altered her face you know some men like that most of them reportedly don't like that and here's the problem maybe is don't frame yourself as the authority on what men like yes <laughs> right i mean but that also could just be that you know you're in your own echo chamber so the people you surround yourself with probably agree with her therefore she thinks that this is a problem on all sides just because the people around you agree with you on something does not mean that that is the be all end all of the world right we all kind of find our way into groups that have like-minded ideas for the most part right so she's surrounded by people that see what she you know her style of beauty as the pinnacle of beauty and that's fine that's that group that does not mean that there are a whole host of other people in the world that see something else as attractive and that's fine it seems like this woman also just doesn't like americans in general and is kind of 
targeting Americans more than just this girl. Um, but, you know, she's doing things in these videos that uh, Americans did for for centuries before everything got modernized and we moved into the cities. Yep. And that's cool that she's spreading that on TikTok. You and know? she's just so much more likable and wholesome. She is. And it says everything about Samira Khan that she said this and insulted this girl out of nowhere. And it says nothing about this girl uh, and, and her character. There's also a bunch of people saying that if you're attracted to Hannah Barron, that you're gay and everyone's coming out like, uh, Dude, that, I found out today that I was. What? Yeah. The, the whole, if yeah. you like to, uh, tomboys or chick that, uh, chicks that lift weights, you're gay. Like, I don't even. There's obviously more to femininity than wearing dresses and heels and lipstick and, you know, getting lip filler and getting, you know, blowouts and spending money. Right? Like, that's stuff that all men can do. They're saying <laughs> that uh, being attracted to this makes you makes you gay. Apparently. Yeah. No. We just learned that today. It does not. <laughs> like, I just, this is another one of those controversies I, on Twitter that no one is going to remember in a few days. I just think it's funny because she's, like, very traditionally beautiful. Like, she, I don't know. Like, she's soft on the eyes in, like, every conceivable way. Like, yeah. thin, pretty face, nice hair, mm -hmm. long. Like, I, it's not like this is, like, she's posting a video of a female bodybuilder, yeah, yeah. right? Like, and also, like something extreme like that. Weren't Southern Bells, like, a thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the comments saying, this is the type of woman that will produce five NFL linebackers. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and uh, you know, in, in men that will conquer the world. Yeah. yeah. Quite possibly. Yep. All right, let's go to Super Chats. Okay. Bucky Ducky said, Mary, I made the cut. I want to see a child, but Twitter won't let me post the video. I bet it's being flagged since Brett is saying something bad. Well, maybe you shouldn't post things of me saying something bad. Okay. Out of context. That just makes them want to post it more. Yeah. Corey Anderson said, Dear Hollywood, if it doesn't have Corey Feldman, I ain't interested. Dude, it's like that day I... I for the life of me, I can't comprehend why I did this. I like treated angrily, like stop calling Tim on. Wait, I'm saying it. Wait, now. what? Because uh, I people oh, sometimes call. Oh, I remember. I people, remember. Sometimes people call Tim on Facebook. Yeah. And so they're calling. Newsflash, it's me. And there was this one day. Did you just pick up and be like, "Hello, this is Tim." <laughs> no, I, hi, what's up? What do you want? <laughs> Snapchat, whatever. Uh, they just like freak out and hang up. Yeah, and I, I was literally upset because one day it was like six times in a row and i was like god can you like please stop calling we are it's almost me. at a second crisis party if you uh if we get to the second crisis party maybe you too can call dane and oh my tim. god no. and then, so tim retweeted it and it literally breaked my phone because of, of the amount of people that were calling at the same time trolling me they thought you were joking and you actually wanted them to call no <laughs> apostle of jbl said pcc needs more super chats so mary can afford to move out from the bad side of town and <laughs> brett can afford an apartment with a window let's go that would be nice you know is this a joke i have uh, no idea but yeah i don't know i don't think i live in a bad side of town well don't say it on air because <laughs> they won't send the super chat money okay i live in a really really bad side of town yes and help we me, need super chats help me get out of the dungeon yes bucky ducky said everyone give me a quack and we'll make a party quack is everyone quacking now quack. Shane h wilder said wait i'm just ken didn't win screw you oscars knuff is knuff also, the John Cena thing was just to try to gain viewers through de degeneracy. All right, is Oppenheimer worth watching? Yes. Every, every person, you're the first person that I've heard say yes. Everyone's been like, oh, it drags long and it's boring. It is long. Uh, it might be a longer watch now that it's not in theaters. Like, it, it really felt to me like the type of thing that I enjoyed seeing on the big screen, but uh, it's long. I mean, I don't mind um, if it's good. Like, I like The Godfather. I uh, I enjoy it. Like, Christopher Nolan is one of the few people that I would trust to be able to make, like, governmental hearings interesting and fun to watch. And there's a lot of that. There's, a, you know, it's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of interpersonal stuff. So it depends on your taste in movies. If you, if you lean towards action, it might not necessarily be the movie for you. And certainly that is more my genre, but I'm a fan of Christopher Nolan's work. If you've liked the other things he's made, yeah, then you probably enjoy it. Wasn't my cup of tea, but I can. It was. It was entertaining enough. I don't know. Cobra Commander upset. Pretty sure Lucifer put out a tweet saying, "I backed off after 1968. The past 50 years are all you people, you psychos." There you go. We're doing the work for him, apparently. Here. 
Drewish AF said ScarJo and Emma Stone would have the only red carpet. What? Um, okay. Sua. I don't know. Cobra Commander said, in an act of solidarity with this poor deaf woman, I propose that none of us listen to her. That way she feels heard, I guess. There you go. Bender the Offender, or sorry, uh, Tacti Platy said, roasting time. Dane, king of roasting. Roast me. Roast him, Dane. Tacti Platy wants Uh, a roast. You're you're tacky and I hate you. He's not tacty. He's tacky. Dutchie said John Cena doing that isn't a humiliation ritual. He's a degenerate. In interviews, he's constantly making sex jokes and says he watches prawn videos. He probably thinks or finds being naked on stage hilarious. Yeah, and I bet you that not being like the head guy for WWE anymore makes him feel more free to be who he probably is in his private life. Which is not not who he thought he was. (laughs) Pat the Plumber said, uh, yells to deaf person, what is the stigma? (laughs) <laughs> well, I was asking the ether, but yes, it could have, uh, if they can read lips, then that's fine. I should do that to you. There you in go. Your, in your body. I'd be like, what? Huh? What? <laughs> the rumbling said, Mary, she couldn't have heard about Jimmy Carr. She could have only read about him. Oh, okay. Nice. Good night. I'll be here all show. <laughs> good. good job, Jim. Thanks for that. Shane H. Wilder said, we all have things that we can be made fun of. A well-grounded person can laugh at their own shortcomings. I mean, Brett does it every day. It's JK there Brett. We go. Literally every every single day. What a shining uh, example. The, the chat does their very best to you know impersonate comedians while making fun of me every day. Um, Yesh said, Welp. Welp. Did you like that? Welp. You like when people say Welp? Welp. Yesh. Yesh is a classic. He's been here from the beginning. Corey Anderson said, Hannah Barron has a Twitter Why? now. Yep, she does. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go find it. No reason. Completely illogical. Okay. I acknowledge yeah. that. Prince Elian said, Gen X are here. Calm down and go outside, Snowflake. We hear you. It's apparent you can't do the same. Everyone can get these jokes. Everyone. Come at me. Yep. yep. Corey Anderson said, bet Hannah can make fried chicken and grits and the other chick can't find the kitchen. Grits are gross. Yeah, they're overrated for sure. But yeah, I mean, they're okay. Shane H. Wilder said, as a Southerner, don't misconstrue our slower cadence as lack of intellect. We are merely contemplating every word instead of spewing vocal diarrhea. There you go. That's uh, a good point. I, I, yeah. I also heard, I don't remember where I heard this. I think it was IRL. Up and coming show, they were saying that the <laughs> southern that southern accent is actually the one that's closest to the British accent. So it's yeah. like, so it's like a bastardization of the British accent in the U.S. It actually is. You can hear the similarities if you're actually thinking about it, um, especially with the O sounds, like so, like that. Mm. Like southern accent would sound just like that. It's weird living in North Carolina. Only the boomers had a southern accent. That Everyone was my- else. My favorite place to live in the U.S. has been North Carolina. Did you hear a lot of accents or? Um, no? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it was just like living in Raleigh that like it's near the city. So there are more people moving there. But yeah, I lived in Hillsboro for a while and everyone was insanely charming. I, I was very taken aback by like just being walking around and people being like, hey there, what are you doing? And I'm like. Okay, it wasn't like that in Raleigh. <laughs> well, that, that was my experience. I was like walking to the gym. Okay, well, yeah. hope you have a good workout. And the, Oh my god! I don't know. Did people ask you about your accent when you lived there? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, people ask me about my accent everywhere. Well, that's fair. But Somebody in the chat said that the 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 um, the Ripiverse, the the next Ripiverse campaign just launched okay. and reached six hundred thousand in two and a half hours. Wow. Would you say my accent's thick? Depends on the the words you're using. I, I know when I say Colorado, like yeah. I just blow your mind every yeah. time. Can you say Simulacra? <laughs> Simulacra. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty heavy on those. It's words. the A's. When you say Colorado, I literally think you're trolling me. I, 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 feel, I feel like you're doing. Colorado. It's kind of like when Dane <laughs> says the word bullying. Colorado. But, but, but how do you how do you, how do you say it? Bullying. No, no. Colorado. 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 Well, I say auto. Okay. I don't say auto. Colorado. Uh, Colorado. Either or. Colorado. Like that's one of those ones where I could tell you I say it one way and on a different Colorado. day I say something completely differently. <laughs> I could. I don't know if I say Colorado. We've literally. I argued. don't know, but it's definitely <laughs> not. Colorado. Okay. It's definitely Colorado. It's in Spanish. There's no second It's a Spanish there. word. Wait, is it a Sp- what's it a Spanish word for? It means red, red, reddish. Oh. It, it's like red tint. Huh. Okay. It's literally a Spanish word. You're saying it wrong. I thought that was roja. Rojo. Rojo? But what's so it, about- it's like describing an object and calling it red. Colorado. Oh. 
Okay. Thank you. Like the lights, Colorado. Yeah. yeah. Donald Trump dance. Bucky Ducky said you heard it here first. Being into women is gay. That's what they're oh. saying. Being, um, into, being into women is super gay. It is, honestly. He also said, sorry, no party, Brett. Dane and Mary didn't quack. Well, it already happened, but... Yeah. Quack, and then he'll give us a third party. Quack. 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 Quack, quack. Mikey said, Southern Bells are a thing. Yeah, then and now. There you go. Frances Francisco Sanchez Jr. said, as a New Yorker, the Southern accent sure as heck beats a Brooklyn or Queens accent. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like the point of those accents is to be as unpleasant as possible. I, I, I mean, yeah, I only really want to hear the Queen's accent if I'm being yelled at. Uh, so <laughs> I want like, to be yelled at. I, I like want the, to be yelled at in a Queen's accent. Yes. What's the Queen's accent? Or a Long Island accent. You know, I, I want basically oh, Margot Queens. Robbie in, in Wolf of Wall Street. That's the accent I want to be yelled at. Oh, that's grating to the ears. I like the Massachusetts uh, accent on men. And I remember <laughs> I was talking to Brett. Was, we were talking about Andy. And I was like, oh, I like how he talks. And he just like dismissively walked and hit me in the back of the of the back, I guess. And was the like, ha ha. Back of the back, and he was like, "Ha ha!" Gay, and like left. Andy doesn't even have an accent. Does Andy? He does a bit. Not really. From he's from Massachusetts. From he lets a rip sometimes. Boston? He does not. He does okay, not. well, not that I ever noticed. No. <laughs> from, what, from what I understand, his because I'm just stupid. Probably. Serenko Production said, "Unfortunately, social media has prolifer prolifer." proliferated the valley girl accent to the most remote corners of the world hashtag stop accent erasure well the internet's responsible for that yeah i mean i think that mass media in general is responsible for that oh there's a stink bug on yeah my mass laptop. media and all those like this is a day where i can attack i gotta start with having a little snacky snack so i <laughs> And they gave us eucalyptus towels, and then I went to a meeting at Sweetgreen. Sly. And <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Woden Shot says, Annie Potts and Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, what do you want? Do you remember the the, vi the guy that officially killed Vibes? Who? What? The New Yorker guy that was like, I saw I went to a death oh, party, and oh, it was a yeah. vibe. And yeah. like, oh, 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 you just made living in New York look like a hellhole. Yeah, like, just like, a the vibes nightmare. were immaculate. It was like, you're an alcoholic. He did like only drink throughout the day, right? Yeah. Like that is an aspect. Making living in New York livable is just you have to drink every day. And then he was talking about a lunch and then a boozy lunch because the the only moment where he consumed food was having boozy alcohol. Lunch. A boozy lunch. Boss, I wasn't drinking on the job. I was having a boozy lunch. Oh no, that was his day off from uh, his job at Reddit. Oh. I'm not kidding. He said he worked. At oh my god! <laughs> yeah, actually. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! This is like. This is like a joke made just for me. Mm -hmm. He's a redditor, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. You're Cobra Commander said, uh, <laughs> "Tongue twister for Dane. Do you have this pulled up that uh, you can do this? Um, it's kind of far away from you, though." Um, no, let me. Let me. You you pull it up and we'll yeah, move give on. Me a Gene H. Wilder said, "I'm actually leaving the next memes to Brett, Mary, and Dane tomorrow. Do you want Brett's Alex Jones phase or the Mary Feelings Faces chart?" Mary Feelings Faces chart. But you just don't want to be a meme. I I you know. Can we do both? No. <laughs> I I choose Brett then. Now we're tied. I choose Mary. And I chose you twice. Two is more than one. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I mean, you're only like I guess like eighty percent of a vote, right? Do you have it? Yeah, you don't even get a full vote because you're a woman. You don't even. Count. Damn, I have three fifths of a vote. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I, I don't even know how to pronounce the second word. Una cacatrepa trepa tiene tres cacatrepitos cuando la cacatrepa trepa trepan los tres cacatrepitos. That was pretty hard. You did well. Mean? What does it mean? I have no idea. I, I have did to Google. Just, did we just call for like genocide? No, <laughs> I really hope no, not. no. I, I don't know what. Kaka they already did it once earlier in the. I did not. I feel yeah. like you didn't comprehend what I, I was mean, saying. So, like, can you explain what you? Well, meant? I, I don't want to now. It but I what... have to pull the episode because Dane said that. COVID I did not say it. My, my point was like, COVID kills fat people. Yeah, but you you can't like wish for that to happen. I did not. I didn't wish it. You kind of well, did. Uh, no. <laughs> Well, you said I mean, you thought you said that, it was going to happen. Is I thought that, that I thought that was like I mean I don't want to keep going if it's okay. a bad thing. Okay, we're moving on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I think we're caught up now. All right, guys. What's a cacatre? Wait, I, I need to know what. Oh, cacatrepa is a, a caterpillar. Okay. Okay. 
Well, all right, guys. <laughs> before we go, would you hit the like button on this video, please, and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Please and thank you. Dane, my friend, as long as you're not, you know, calling for things that you I call did for, not. Let everyone know where they can find you. I uh, Dane Fun on Twitter. <laughs> you're not even going to spell it today? Well, I shall spell that out for you. D-A-N-E-F-O-N okay. as in Nancy T. And then there's one more super chat there. I don't see it. Uh, Elias says he just called us all dirty pigs. No, I didn't. Oh, he Dane. means to, No, it's like a caterpillar crawls up with three caterpillars when a caterpillar crawls up three caterpillars. It's a nonsensical sentence when you get really get down to it, but it's a real tongue twister. <laughs> okay. You guys can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived. Perfect. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. PCC is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify if you would prefer to listen <laughs> rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and not TikTok at PopCultureCrisis. Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. We have one more here from Shane H. Wilder. He says, I mean, whatever you pick, the other will be posted on Wednesday, so I guess we are going with Mary tomorrow and Brett on Wednesday. I'm okay with that. Okay. And then we got one more here from Bucky Ducky. He says, goodbye, Brett. I'll always forget you. I appreciate okay, that. Rude. And Cobra Commander says, a hillbilly taught a Puerto Rican Spanish. <laughs> okay. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. With that being said, we'll be There's back. There's another within, one. Oh, one more. Gordon Shumway said, the Southern accent actually is an offshoot of the Irish and Scottish accents. Because the original settlers came from those regions, Thomas Sowell goes in depth in his lectures and books. Okay, right. interesting. With that being said, guys, we will be back <laughs> with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.